seven iconic housewives from four different cities. Look at this water. We're going to give them something to talk about. Vacation at Turks and Caicos. It's a party now. The Real Housewives Ultimate Girls Trip. All episodes streaming now, only on Peacock. And we watch her fall into disrepute on the boat. Like, we've already watched her become a prostitute, but we have to watch it again? Again? Yeah. This There will never be a... Nothing she ever does doesn't turn into prostitution. She, like, finds a nickel on the ground. She bends over to pick it up, and it's on a string, and she gets dragged into a brothel again. Yeah. Ah, <laughs> dang it! <laughs> By the end of the movie, she, like, trips and falls, lands in a feather bed. Ah, man! Uh, what's that? Yeah. Seventh time, that's on me. God awful movie movie movies. Welcome back to the Gamecast, where each week we sample another selection from Christian cinema because free will is an illusion. I'm your host, No Illusions. Heath will be unable to join us today, but sitting 900 miles to my northeast is my bad friend, Eli Bosnick. Eli, how are you this fine afternoon, sir? Not super great, Noah! Yeah, I <laughs> pulled an audible here. But before we get to that, also joining us from 3,000 miles to my west is returning guest masochist and host of the Talk Nerdy podcast, Kara Santa Maria. Kara, welcome back. Mm-hmm. Yep, yeah, I yeah. am here. Right? Uh-huh. You can't give us the silent treatment for a podcast, Kara. <laughs> I, I understand why, but it doesn't work. Yeah, well, I'll tell you what. Let's help the uh, listeners understand, and we'll do so with this question. Tell us, Kara, what will we be breaking down today? You guys owe me $20. <laughs> we do owe you $20. <laughs> We're going to break true. down the bill. <laughs> you owe me $20 and two hours and 14 minutes of my life. Not to hours. mention an, a night of, of terrible dreams. Uh, oh. You guys, th- what are we breaking down today? Okay, so the movie is called Redeeming Love. Not sure why. Maybe you guys will explain that to me later. Nope. No love, no redemption. Everything about it is <laughs> garbage. And it's just basically a massive trigger warning for anybody who has ever dealt with abuse. Yeah. That's what we watch. Or hasn't. Or hasn't, right? Really, because they honestly, make it real. Yeah. yeah. Uh, oh gosh, yeah. No, we owe you a lot more than $20 in two hours after this. Yes, you owe me. You owe me at least my next three therapy sessions. <laughs> there you go. Fair. <laughs> and Eli, how bad was this movie? Well, if you love the refractory period after watching porn, you feel guilty about. But you wish it lasted two hours and 14 minutes. Oh, my God. You will love this movie. Yeah, the whole way through this movie, I was playing that. But maybe there's 26 minutes of credits game just to get me. Oh. Sure the fuck was. No. I was like, where are my Avengers credits, damn it? <laughs> right, right. Who did the CGI? So to, to give you an idea of the contrast, too, I had to drop this into the notes here. This movie has a 12% rating on... Rotten Tomatoes, if you ask people who know shit about movies, the audience score is 95%. What? Who is the audience for this movie? It says there are 500 plus verified yes. ratings. Who are these people? I want to interview them for a psychological study. Serial killers. Misogynists. They are misogynists. Because yeah. this entire movie is just us watching a woman be tortured for like two hours and one minute and then her forgiving everyone for torturing her for like another two right yep oh and a bunch of people forgiving her for being for being well, that's the the yeah, that's yes yeah. right no you're right i got the focus entirely wrong that's the real message <laughs> i could not believe this was written by a woman i was shocked yeah this was written by a woman. so was the screenplay or the book it was based on the, the book it was based on was written by a woman now as i understand it she was involved in the writing of the screenplay but what does that really mean right wow she co-wrote it according to the credits but you know yeah. oh god and i'm pretty sure the director was the same guy who did disturbia which i actually liked oh is it that guy yeah 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 that's like bumming me out there are some strangely legitimate people associated with this movie the dude who played paul that was an amazing performance yeah like like, there was just weirdly there was some and that honestly made the movie worse is that there was just weirdly good stuff like if if you know donald parker was playing the the male lead in it or something this would have been a lot easier yeah oh no this was a this was a movie with legitimate director of photography like Mm -hmm. all the acting was pretty good like there was nothing (laughs) the male lead not so much but yeah everything else i feel like 
we were watching a real Hollywood movie that was just sullied with a garbage, like everything about it was horrible mm-hmm. from the inception, but then they actually like figured out how to dupe a bunch of legitimate people to make it. Yes. Yeah. To give you a great example of how this movie is legitimate, but there's nothing redeeming about it, in the general trivia on Amazon Prime, which I love so very, very much, it explains that Michael and Angel, they originally met when they were in X-Men 3. That's it. That's all we got there, yep. friends. <laughs> they, have, they enjoyed oh, their time. Well, okay. In a different movie, they had a good time. Yeah, yep. yeah. <laughs> It's not even not even those two actors. It's even less interesting than that when you really drill down into it. But yeah. <laughs> so is there anything you guys want to nominate this one for being the best at be the worst at? I mean, yeah, just best worst re-traumatization. Yeah. Like this is not yeah. a psychologically healthy movie to watch. I don't think. No. No. Yeah. Well, and I was going to go with best worst. And we already uh, hinted at this redemption. Right. Because spoiler alert, the thing that the main character needs redeemed for is being kidnapped and raped and sold into sexual slavery. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And the way that she's going to get that redemption is by having her trauma mansplained away by a guy who thinks she should smile more. (laughs) Yeah. (laughs) That's the movie. That's the whole movie right there. Literally. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. And of course, I am going to go with best worst. Way to ruin my friendship with Kara. <laughs> <laughs> Little background here. I like Kara. We're chums. But largely, our contact consists of me saying, hey, great job on the show. And boy, do I have an awful movie for you this week. <laughs> so a couple of weeks ago, I watched the trailer for this movie because a bunch of people have requested it. And I, lo- I re- look at it and I'm like, oh, it's a cheesy cowboy romance Perfect for Kara. So I write her a message being like, this one's a real stinker. Little did I know I was setting her up to watch fucking Sallow. Right? And I'm watching it the night before our record just thinking, oh my God, I need to text Kara that this isn't my idea of a fun joke. Yeah. This is not a prank. I woke hey. up to a text from you, like an apology text. This has never happened before in the history of me coming on God Awful Movies. I will joyfully celebrate <laughs> you watching Marky Mark's personality roll down a hill gathering shit. <laughs> but this isn't, this isn't a fun yuckster. Wow. <laughs> Yikes. All right. Well, I'll tell you what, we've got a lot of psychological scabs to pick at on the other side of this break, so we're going to give you a minute to prepare, but we'll be back in a flash with all the torture porn that is redeeming love. No, that sounds great. I'll see you Friday. It sounds good. All right. Bye-bye. Kara. Jesus, Eli, how'd you get into my office? The door was open. No, it was not. Well, it was once I opened it. Otherwise, I couldn't have gotten in, Kara. Right. Um, What do you want? Yeah. Can I borrow your cell phone? I need to make a call. It's important. What's wrong with your phone? Eh, it just got so pricey with all the hidden fees and the sneaky bills. I just had to give it up. Well, why don't you just try Mint Mobile? What's Mint Mobile? Well, Mint Mobile is the easiest way to save this year. As the first company to sell premium wireless service online only, Mint Mobile lets you maximize your savings with plans starting at just $15 a month. 15 bucks a month? What's the catch? There's no catch. By going online only and eliminating the traditional cost of retail, Mint Mobile passes significant savings on to you. All plans come with unlimited talk and text and high-speed data delivered on the nation's largest 5G network. Use your own phone with any Mint Mobile plan and keep your same phone number along with all your existing contacts. And if you're not 100% satisfied, Mint Mobile has you covered with their seven-day money-back guarantee. All right, Kara, I'm sold. How do I sign up? To get your new wireless plan for just 15 bucks a month and get the plan shipped to your door for free, go to mintmobile.com slash gam. That's mintmobile.com slash G-A-M. Cut your wireless bill to 15 bucks a month at mintmobile.com slash gam. Awesome. Thanks. Dude, dude, you, you guys are taking too long. The fire is spreading. Oh, sorry. I totally forgot. Kara was telling me about Mint Mobile. You set a fire in my apartment? Why? Oh, it was for the Olympics. What are you talking about? The Olympics? Big sporting event? Who doesn't know about the Olympics? Oh my God, I hate you guys so much. <laughs> Kara! Francine! Thank you so much for meeting me for Famous People Lunch to discuss my screenplay. Well, you are in my hot Pilates class. Kind of had to say yes. Indeed you did. So be honest, what did you think of my movie? 
honestly, it was really traumatizing and just bad. Oh, how so? Well, a full 95% of the script is just terrible things happening to a woman. And then the other 5% is a random guy with no personality forgiving her for having bad things happen to her. Mm -hmm. Yes, but he is a very handsome man and he loves her so very much. Okay, so no, he doesn't. He sees her in a window and and then is like, I'm going to have her. That's not love. That's creepy stalker stuff. Mm, you don't believe in love at first sight? Uh, not when there is no further contact, no. Mm, I perhaps should adjust the script. Yes, honestly, I think you need to make some major changes here. Mm, okay. What if in Act 2, instead of the scene where he declares his love, an evil man from the town gives her a giant bomb to hold and then it explodes? Okay, that's definitely worse. Mm, perhaps he could drop a piano on her head. You know what? I'm going to go. But we haven't eaten our famous people crackers. I don't even want my famous people crackers. But they keep us young forever. I know that. And we're back for the breakdown. We're going to open up on... 12 minutes of logos, actually, before we can <laughs> get to the movie. Savor it, people. Savor it. Those logos are the most pleasant thing in the movie. It'll never be this good again. Yeah. <laughs> uh, they open with the bard, too. I'm sure Eli was thrilled to see the Shakespeare quote opening things up. Yeah. Which is great because not only is it not William Shakespeare's original words, it is taken out of context from someone who is trying to cheat at a contest so she doesn't have to marry an African person. So oh, it's geez. really, it is this movie in a nutshell. If you wanted to know where we're headed, we're headed towards thinking William Shakespeare wrote this and as a good piece of advice. Well, I honestly, as I reflect on it, given how much of this movie was filmed in the golden hour, I think this was an apology, right? They're like, so just so you know, this movie is not, it's going to glitter a lot. But uh. <laughs> I am looking back now at my notes and like, this is when the worst thing I thought I was going to have to deal with was that this movie was a Western. Right. Yeah. Oh, the naivety. I saw that line <laughs> and I was just like, oh, there was a, it's like that represents a time of innocence that is in a bygone <laughs> era now. Right. <laughs> so, yeah. So we are going to open up in 1850s California in a town called Paradise, but like a pair of dice, not pair. It, get it? It's that. Yeah. But like they're not being cute about it. No. no. Like they just, Talk about it like it's a statement of fact. Was that a thing? Yeah, well, it's, it's all the heavy handed naming in this fucking movie, right? The, the name of the town is Paradise. The character's name is Angel. She's being oppressed by Duke, but later Duchess. It's just it's all so, you know, Pilgrim's Progress or whatever. Yeah, yeah. I mean, I wasn't willing to read the book, obviously, having watched even a minute of this movie. But what it strikes me is that like, they tried to make a movie out of like a trashy romance novel. And so just a bunch of very straight faced actors have to be like, and this here is Hutch Biggins, right. the handsomest man who's ripple pecks. Yeah. <laughs> so we open up on this little mining town and everybody's lined up for the prostitution lottery to see who gets to fuck our main character. Yeah. Why? Is this in the movie? Like, it would work just fine if she was not a super prostitute, but rather a normal prostitute. <laughs> what does her <laughs> pimp have to gain by a, a lottery-based system? Well, everybody has to buy in. No, I, I get oh, it. I get it go. financially. This it makes is. a lot of okay. sense. But just as a as a story, it's kind of a dumb opening. I guess they're trying to establish that she's the hot one. Yeah. I think that's all that is. Yeah, I feel like having a hot actor does that. You do that with makeup and costume. But yes, yeah, that's... I mean, she is beautiful, so they could have just like yeah, had right. that. It's not like we wouldn't have gotten that she's physically attractive <laughs> if they hadn't been like, no, I mean it. There's a, a lot of... She no, was in X-Men 3. Super prostitute, really. She had a good time. <laughs> so yeah, so but we see her looking out at the lottery and remembering a better time. So we doodly do back into her childhood where she's gathering flowers and she's about to meet her pa for the first time yeah oh yeah like like we think this is going to be sweet it's not sweet no mm -hmm. no we we slowly reveal that her mother is this man's mistress and she was supposed to have been aborted but she wasn't and he's not too happy about the fact that he has this illegitimate child on the side right it's also like 
there's this weird tonal shift that the movie does constantly where like someone was standing next to a bookstore that had like pride and prejudice in it. So they're aware that it's like lace and flowers, but it's so ugly that every time anything remotely pretty or antiquated happens, a guy has to like shit on it with an open butthole right <laughs> next to it. <laughs> Well, and here's my naive innocence, right? So this this scene ends with the little girl being sent away and we watch her watch her mother get beaten up by her dad, right? Yeah. And we just we hear that off camera. And at that point, I was just like, you know, I, I didn't realize that that was just going to be the theme of the movie. Yeah, yeah. No, this is like about as, as happy as the movie is. Yeah. This, this is the happy scene in the movie. Cause he's, she's not just listening to her mom get the shit beat out of her by her dad, who, by the way, is not married to her mom, you mm -hmm. know, has a wife and a family. Right. But he, she's also hearing him say things like, you should have aborted her. I told you not to give birth to her. Right. She should not exist. I wish yeah. that she didn't exist. Yeah. Honestly, if you told me that this movie was made because someone got a good deal on woman getting slapped Foley packages, <laughs> yeah. a lot of the movie makes a lot more sense. <laughs> yeah. So the little girl, this is young angel. She goes off to mope in the garden for a bit. Mom finds her later. And she, of course, says like, hey, you know, if if I were to die tragically, would that fix things between you and my dad? You know, so. That's where we're going to start with this character. And she's like, we don't talk like that in this family. Like, death. I'm the one who gets to tragically die. Don't you steal my doodly two story, <laughs> you little asshole. <laughs> my agent said this would be good for me. Yes. <laughs> so, yeah, so we, but then we doodly do back to the brothel. And I guess it's, it's time for Angels 15, right? Yeah. I love that whenever movie makers write a brothel, they also write a weird break room where the sex workers want to all share tragic backstories. Is this the first time they've all met? She's supposed to be here for years. And they're just like, oh, by the way, what? Where are you from? What, what are our origin stories now that you mention it? Yeah. And they're all so like forward, like the chick with the cool Irish accent is like, man, I got beaten to shit. Look at all my scars. She's like lifting up her shirt. Like, who does that? Nobody does that in real life. No, it takes on a very like that scene in Jaws right before the big <laughs> reveal exactly. kind of a moment. Like, you know, look at this. This is where I got. Yeah. And of course, this ends with them all sort of turning to the main character and saying, well, Angel, the super prostitute, what is what is your origin story? And she's like, oh, it's mysterious. Like we're doing there's a series of doodly doos. So <laughs> I can't. Did y'all not see my doodly do earlier? No. <laughs> oh, all right. <laughs> you can rent this movie on Amazon because of how badly it did on <laughs> In theaters, yeah. In theaters. All right, so we get that scene, and then we meet our lightly bearded love interest farmer. How does he keep his beard so neatly trimmed in the 1850s, y'all? Great question. Great <laughs> question. This Look, I'm not going to ever pretend that any woman could be as bad at writing men as men are usually bad at writing women, but this writer gets close. Oh, yeah. He is so one dimensional. Right. If you told me that he walked baldly as his balls <laughs> jiggled. <laughs> <laughs> and this actor, by the way, is the weakest link in this film, right? Oh, sure. By far. Yeah. He's kind of a handsome, thin, young Rufus Sewell looking guy. But, but like, it, Literally, one of the actors known for us that comes up when you look him up on IMDb is a voice credit for Assassin's Creed Valhalla. That is the <laughs> height that this guy has has reached in his acting career and for a reason. Mm -hmm. Oh, flash cut to him facing opposite direction of the mic. Come on, man. <laughs> bud. Come on, buddy. It's like this whole movie is, and maybe this is just me, as I get older... Occasionally, my female friends will date a young moron yeah, yeah, yeah. and bring them into our presence and we all have to be cool. It's like that the whole movie. Yep. Yeah. Right. Yeah, yeah. Is it's just like, so Skylar, she says you're a surf coach. <laughs> well, I would be as soon as slash I get a board life coach slash life coach. <laughs> I'm so glad you're at this wedding. I'm so glad she brought you to this wedding. <laughs> <So>. <laughs> So, yeah, so he does a quick farming montage 
I always feel so bad for actors, to be fair. Like, and yes, he is by far the worst actor in this movie, but I hadn't learned that yet mm-hmm. at this point. Yeah. So my empathy was still, you know, <laughs> like it hadn't burnt out yet. But he, like, whenever I see scenes, it reminds me, do you guys remember Requiem for a Dream? Or, uh, like Ellen Bernstein. I'd had love to, to forget it, but yeah. <laughs> yeah, I know. When she had to, like, clean her whole apartment, like, because she was on meth. Yes! Or, like, there's all, it's, just, it's a montage of him doing manual labor in the farm, which means he's doing manual labor. Because anybody who's worked in production knows that you're doing, like, an hour's worth of work for a minute of film. Right, right. yeah. Uh-huh. So this guy is, like, doing manual labor, and there's an entire movie crew just watching him get <laughs> sweaty and, like, struggle with this old-school plow. Okay, counterpoint, every time he wasn't doing that, he started acting. Yeah, again. So I think right. the crew was probably really. But she didn't know that yet, right. She didn't realize that at this point. <laughs> just sitting there, oh, thank God, it's another picking Tomatoes day. <laughs> you got it, buddy. <laughs> But of course, this montage ends with him at church thanking God for all the white privilege and everything. Now, he's he's praying out loud because it's a movie, but he's at the end of his prayer. He's sort of like he Columbo's got he's like one more thinging God. Mm -hmm. Yep. And he's like, oh, also, well, I've got you on the line real quick. Did you hang up? Have you hung up? You're not. okay. you're still on. I also would like a wife, like a love interest at some point, which also makes no sense. Because he's clearly the only person within like a thousand mile radius with clean white teeth. <laughs> yeah. Mm-hmm. Like it, he, there's, he would have no problem landing any woman near him in this era. It's nice that he got that manicure too before, after doing all that farm work before he headed <laughs> yeah. to the, she's, and he tells Jesus that he's a leg man, right? He's like, you know, I, I, Oh, that was so weird. He literally, this is the quote. Maybe she likes fishing. Maybe she's got long legs. You know the kind I need. What? 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 You're talking to Jesus. Jesus should just show up and go, do you really think this is appropriate if in a prayer, man, for you to tell me? First of all, I'm the omniscient, omnipotent creator of the universe, so I know that you're into weird feet stuff. But <laughs> second of all, you don't have to say it, right? As part of your prayer, you've been here for 38 seconds. Nothing. Eight seconds of it weird was foot stuff. About be- don't stop making foot stuff weird Eli stop well okay well that's what I was gonna say because if this character has a personality a big percentage of it is foot stuff (laughs) yeah that's true so yeah but he walks out of the church and then the fucking clouds form a big thumbs up emoji as he's leaving so he knows that God got the message oh Oh, is that what that was well I don't know what the fuck that I I thought it was a dust bowl reference but then it never (laughs) it never came to fruition I think there was just a that was a they were out one day and he was like oh get them cool clouds I bet we can do something with that them are cool (laughs) it's one of the many moments when this movie turned to California's weather and was like huh movie (laughs) this is nice cinematic we shot this in hd yeah oh for sure like there's literally when they're in the town which is clearly a back lot at universal you're like oh that's burbank right i know those hills that's just burbank right there (laughs) like they forgot to like edit out the like mansions up on the top right oh there's you 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 see like some kid in a fucking band t-shirt eating a turkey leg off to the side or something yeah it's just awful so and and we go back there and everybody is ogling angel as she walks she's doing taking her monday and or friday walk yeah, right what? i guess it's or i guess it's not and but she goes for a walk every day and it's like a parade all the horny guys line up on either side of the street to watch her walk down the street Mm-hmm. It's so weird. And at that time, of course, our main character, Michael, the the love interest, is there and sees her for the first time. Right. He's like dropping off farm goods or something. Or picking them up. or Yeah. yeah he's come to town to do his trades and he sees her and is like, I'm in love with her. I will have her. Yes. Yep. And the people who made this movie thought that was romantic. Yep. They sure did. He might as well just pee on her leg and yell dibs and the movie's like, mm-hmm, yep, he uh, he got dibs. And there's like like violins playing in the background. <laughs> I'm like, what? And look, there's not a lot about this movie that is funny, but the amount of sentences it takes for him to understand that she's a prostitute yes. when talking to her. Yes! <laughs> yeah. The funniest part of the movie. She's, no, man, she's not the kind of girl for you. Oh, you mean because she's so pretty? No, because she buys and sells sex for a living. Right. The album? What? What are you talking about, man? You see how she's holding a sign that says, I am a prostitute? Mm. Yes. 
So, yeah, but and, and he, he turns to Jesus and he's going like, oh, so that's the girl that you, you picked for me, huh? And then we see her watch him out the window like she wants it, right? This whole movie is is very stalkery from that moment, right? Oh, yeah, yeah for sure. So she looked out the window and saw him staring at her. So she must have agreed with Jesus. Well, it's stalkery from the moment he says he'd like one with legs. You know the kind I like. Well, that's true. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> like that's really where we establish that. This isn't just the stripper likes you back the movie. This is the stripper loves you back the movie. No, it's it's even worse than that. It's the stripper would learn to love you if only you kidnapped her and held her at your home against her will for a certain amount of time. But we'll get there. Oh, yeah. This this is this is the damsel in distress tied to a railroad track. Yes. Like that, it's that trope. This whole movie is the. This sad, dejected, abused, tortured woman who just needs to be saved by the righteous Christy yep. guy who is literally just as bad as every one of her torturers. And it was written by a woman. Yeah. Bizarre. Ow! Well, maybe she... Uh, well, maybe there's more depth if you actually read the book or something. Yeah, Who that's knows? That's my hope, but, but I doubt it because she okayed this movie. So, yeah. But the thing that we have to remember true. is that sexism, like misogyny and sexism, is so intrinsic to our culture. Yeah. That like women are sexist too. Well, and we also have to keep in mind that this book was written in 1991 or, or came out in 1991. So it was written quite a bit earlier in terms what, of it was our, written before feminism. <laughs> well, yeah, I mean, I, I mean, it's before a lot of feminism. But, but you know, it, no. it, it, it is sort of like a, a I, I, you know, that's the time I grew up. I can say for certain that, like, we were as a culture far more OK with sexism then. Yeah, but the movie was made this right. year. That's yeah. the thing. Exactly. <laughs> exactly. Exactly. The movie yeah, came out now. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Like, there's also there's a bunch of old timey books that we just don't revisit. No one's watching Breakfast at Tiffany's. <laughs> yeah. Right. Exactly. That's the question is why the fuck would you make this movie in today's environment? Yeah. Because Jesus. I guess, right. Well, so that 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 is what I kept thinking about. And like as much as I hated this movie and as gross as it was and unpleasant, I am really glad we're talking about it because it's it is important to remember that this is the poison being sold to Christian women. Yeah. Right? Oh, Which is that the trauma sure. done to them dirties them, sullies them, and they need the forgiveness of God and a good man. Yeah, 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 yeah for sure. And and we've got to remember that. Movies are made, yes, to make you think and yes, to, I don't know, uh, make you more culturally and civically aware. But movies are m mostly made to entertain you. And there are more than 500 people, mm -hmm. at least on Rotten Tomatoes, yeah. who said, I, as, I am entertained. Yeah. Like they enjoyed watching a woman be tortured throughout this entire film. For two hours and 14 minutes, yeah. Because the thing is, we don't just talk about it. Like, they don't just reference it. They show it over Constantly. and over and over. Yeah, well, it's, yeah, right. Actually, we're going to do that a little bit now because we're going to go back into the flashback of her childhood, right? We have the slave character who we barely even touch on that that takes care of her. Oh, the mammy character who yeah, like, they uh -huh. give the accent to and everything. Like, what year is it, you guys? Oh, man, the amount of it's look slave character who explains morality to her in this doodly do is not the most used as a prop an African American person will be, but she's close. Yeah, I'd say she's yeah. second yeah. place. No, yeah. she might as well be selling syrup. Yeah, yeah, exactly. So, and then we see the 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 mother falling on hard. So, like her dad doesn't want to take care of her anymore. So the mother falls on hard times, and we see like we see her her being sort of like forced into prostitution by her poverty. Over a montage. Yeah. Okay. This wasn't funny. It was gross. But <laughs> Eli, I could see but. the actors. But <laughs> hear me out. Hear me out. I can see the actors all looking at each other as this going on being like, this is Les Mis, right? You guys are all, <laughs> you guys know this is Les Mis. Right? Like the, I'm the mom and I got the daughter. Yes, no. Like I have the shaved head. I have the same outfit. At a certain point, I was like, she gonna sing Dream to Dream because we're just doing like No, and it even like looks like Europe. Like it's yeah. a little confusing. Yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. They're like on the docks. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Yeah. And, and then of course, it, you know, she's she's having a heart to heart with her daughter about how hard life is. And then she coughs, and I'm like, well, she's good, she's as good as dad. That's dead. Oh yeah. That one cough. That's what I wrote to her. I was like, she's got consumption. Yep. 
<laughs> I almost went with best worst coffeeitis because look, <laughs> movies give you five, 10, 15 minutes of coffeeitis. This lady's like, <clears throat> dead. Yeah. I mean, she fucking. Oh, and, and, and her death is hilarious. So she's laying on the bed all deathy and she turns to the daughter. She's like, pray with me, daughter. And they start praying. And then she dies mid prayer yeah right it's hilarious and at this point i pause the movie and see that there is still another hour and 55 <laughs> minutes left too much has happened yeah so, abused daughter and mother illegitimate child realize and then the dad leaves them to be you know cast away into poverty and the mom becomes a sex worker and then mom dies of consumption and meanwhile love interest has already established himself how is there an hour right. and 55 minutes left in this plot it's, it's an hour and 54 minutes of lady punching yeah right <laughs> oh yes so, and of course, this is the moment where she loses her faith, too, right? And this movie, as heavy-handed as it is, has to show that by having her chuck the cross necklace that her mom gave her into the river. And again, not funny, but that does come back in a pretty fucking funny way. It, it does, yeah. <laughs> so then we cut back to the modern day so that we can watch her be abused more. Oh, yeah, right. Because every scene when we come back, she that's how it has to start. It, just in case you forgot in the in the interim... Yeah, we have the, like, I guess her pimp is this chick, Duchess, that's Famke Jensen, the, the chick that was in the X-Men movies. Oh, she was in the X-Men movies? Because she is the second worst actor in this movie. She really, she was terrible, she was terrible in this, wasn't in she? This. I was like, is that a Jersey accent? Yes. <laughs> she had a Jersey accent, but they're supposed to be in, like, the Wild West. You know, she, her third read through of the script, she was just like, you know what? I'm doing this as Carl the Fuck a Peggy. I know you this is, this is a bad yep. movie. Yep. <laughs> I'm, I'm mad I'm in it. How's it going? You better be having sex with those guys for money. I'm a bunker banker corner. Yeah. No, and so that's Duchess. And then she's got her like her enforcer, her henchman. And that's the guy that's beating up on Angel now for thinking that she's better than him. Oh, yeah. What's his weird name? Oh, I don't even remember. Murphy it. Muggsy. Muggsy Wiles. No, it comes along at the end. We wrote it down. It's like it's like McCormick. M no, no it's, it's like those are all real names. Yeah, it's all. Those are words that you would use to describe a person. It's like Malaga fly or yeah, something it's some weird, weird like that. shit. Yeah, I just have her, him down as her enforcer because I didn't want to bother learning it. But yeah, so he's about to beat her up and then Duchess comes in and says, don't punch her. People won't want to have sex with her. S slap her and waterboard her. And they do. Oh, yeah, yeah. Like put her in the tub. And she's drunk, I think. I don't know if that matters. Or high or but... something, yeah. No, I think she's drunk. I think it's clear that she, you know, she also has a substance abuse problem. Yes, because of because her life is terrible and she has it's just, yeah, terrible another PTSD. Thing that she needs and, yeah. somebody to forgive her for. Yeah, self medicating. And again, if I can part the curtain slightly, this is where I started being like, oh, she probably takes care. <laughs> yeah, probably takes care. Because care. Here's the thing: I can tell how much Kara is ironically enjoying a movie by her notes and this is where her notes go from like a hunky paragraph down to like a sentence or two. Oh yeah what am I by the end of the movie they're just like single words like no bad <laughs> no think, projection I think I have to okay I think my only note here is oh great I love watching sex workers get abused <laughs> why is this movie wow oh, mm -hmm. yeah so okay but then Michael shows up he is her next customer and he comes in and, and he's all like nervous and and she's all way naked for a Christian movie. But don't worry, her hair covers her boobs. So it's 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 OK for. Oh, yeah. So it's PG-13 still. Yeah. Once again, not a funny movie, but the comic extents that they will go through <laughs> yes. to cover her boobs. Yeah. Throughout this film, they might as well have like two same height little people like walk through the frame like what were you saying the other day about a knock yes. knock joke so that we just don't see a nipple well yeah it's like it's like that ridiculous scene in um the mike myers franchise yes right yeah uh -huh. exactly <laughs> yes it's like, it's like frying pans and stuff uh so but he's not there to have sex with her he's there to have a conversation and i'm like i bet sex workers love to have conversations with people so awkward they have to pay sex workers for conversation <laughs> oh what a good time what <laughs> a good time yeah it's like basically the grossest meat cute of all time oh he tells her at one point that she's going to marry him before this movie's over <sighs> 
right? Yeah. And she says, I don't want to marry you. And he's like, yeah, I don't care. That's not going to factor in at all to my decision. I don't, I don't understand. What does that have to do with anything? I don't give a fuck. Oh, no, I should explain. God gave me to you like a present. Right, right. Because, of course, what is his name? Michael. Michael what? Michael, Michael Hosea. Hosea, yes. So I know you guys are the Bible people, and I know Thank that you'll you. tell the whole story, but I did Google it, and <laughs> and I found the, the from from the story of Hosea, the first line basically is, when the Lord began to speak through Hosea, the Lord said to him, go marry a promiscuous woman and have children with her, for like an adulterous wife, this land is guilty of unfaithfulness to the Lord. Okay. I would like to have a sidebar about how little to do with fucking Hosea this movie is. Yes, thank you. So first of all, in Hosea, he marries a divorced woman, which is some Bronze Age promiscuity shit. (laughs) Second of all, and they don't carry this out, which I really wish they would, at the end of Hosea, she cheats on him and has another man's child, so he names the child, You're Not My Kid. (laughs) And honestly... Honestly, there's not a lot this movie could have done to save itself. But if he, if she had just like walked into the third act with a child of like very obviously not his lineage and just been like, "Hey there, not my son, how you doing?" I, I, yeah, I could have been one back. Yeah, it would have been better. Would have been a better film, I think. Well, so there's there's a couple of important ways that they diverge from the source material here too. One of them is that at least by the standards of the Bible, whatever sexist ass shit standards they have, Hosea's wife was like. You know, she sinned. She wasn't like forced. She wasn't raped. That wasn't the sin, right? Like she chose to do things that were that were sinful. Exactly. The other thing that they did that really, I think, fucked up the movie is that in Hosea, the woman's name is Gomer. And how yeah. awesome would this movie have been if the <laughs> oh whole fucking god. time they had to keep talk, calling her Gomer? <laughs> oh my god. I actually made a joke at the end, because at the very end, spoilers, at the very end, she tells him her name as the big, like, right, yeah, uh-huh. moment of the movie. Honestly... Honestly, this would be my favorite film if she was like, my name is Gomer. Oh, yeah. That would be like, that would make this movie like the Christian version of The Mist. Right. Yeah. Yeah. Where like the end completely redeems the exactly. whole movie. But you're doing, right. you're doing it to everyone in the theater instead of your son. I get it. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Right. So, but she makes him believe. And then the immediate next scene is him coming to pester her again after she kicked him out. Oh, yeah. Like, why didn't they? I mean, this movie is long enough. They could have broken these two scenes up. I feel like, they, uh, yeah. Yeah. It was weird. And let me tell you, the best way to win a sex worker's heart is your job is degrading and I hate you for it. <laughs> yep. <laughs> yep. So, yeah. So, but he stalks her some more, but she, and she's, you know, she, she tells him to leave again, but he's not going to give up because, you know, doesn't matter how many times you ask that stripper to date you, she's going to eventually say, yes, keep it up, you know, is the mm-hmm. message mm-hmm. of this movie. So, okay. So, and then we get the scene where he's like back at the market and his buddy at the shop is giving him more shit for, for stalking Angel, right? Mm-hmm. Question, does this gentleman suggest he consider fucking a cow? I feel like that was the implication, right? Because he's like, he's like, all this gold you're spending to see Angel, you could have just bought some cows by now. So what do you do? What do you do with cows, man? <laughs> what do you, how is, I did that went completely over my head. I did not see that. How is that in your mind a similar thing Mm -hmm. (laughs) but yeah and then we cut back to the sex worker break room right and they're like so that guy that keeps showing up with the bafflingly well-trimmed beard for the time period and very clean teeth and the very clean teeth and fingernails are you in love with him is he gonna take you away from this place and she's like nah it's still act one yeah yeah she's like i'm just gonna sit here and drink some milk thank you (laughs) okay look this movie is boring and terrible but sometimes in boring and terrible movies, you have an under five who has just one line and they worked with their acting coach a little too hard and they suck all the <laughs> fucking energy out of the film because they are doing classic break room prostitute stuff. And then apropos of nothing, one character who has never spoken and will never speak again goes, you're drinking too much fucking milk <laughs> at the it's top of her voice. glass of milk for each of us. <laughs> And then it's never seen again. So much of my notes are like, what's going on with Milk Girl? Can we check (laughs) in with her? This movie's unpleasant. Also, there's this weird moment. Okay, so one of the other sex workers says to her, she's like, hey, if you don't want that guy who's trying to take you away from this place and, and be your husband, I'll take him. And she's like, yeah, please take him off my hand. So the next scene is that girl coming up to him saying, hey, Angel would rather that you that you bothered me instead of her. And he says, no. 
Now, that's all fine, except for this character is one of the three women of color in the entire fucking movie. Yep. And also remember, like, the era of the movie, because they point that out, too. They're like the African girl, like basically the slave girl. Right, exactly. And 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 like, I don't think the movie means for it to play like Michael is incredibly racist and is grossed out by the concept of having sex with a black woman. But that's sure how it plays in the movie. Yeah, it sure. Is. The only reason we don't think so is because there's a reference later that like redeems him again. But we don't know that yet. Right. And so in this scene, he's literally like, ew, and like right. pushes yes. her to the side. Yep. Yes. And it's it, not great. It's supposed to be he's angry at Angel for passing him off, but that sure isn't what it seems like in the moment. I legit wrote subtle racism for the lead. Um, <laughs> ticking all the evangelical boxes. You're right. Yeah. <laughs> sure is. And to be clear, he is now like huffy that here at this third meeting, Angel is not convinced to love him and run away with him. Oh, yeah. Marry him. Yeah. And he's like becoming aggressive about it. Yep. And it's like, wow, he's just as bad as all of the other characters. Absolutely. Yeah. And she says to him, she's like, he's like, marry me. And she's like, no, you're a shitty farmer. I don't want to be a shitty farmer's wife. Fuck off. So then he fucks off. But she watches him out the window, wishing she hadn't told him to fuck off. So, yes, once again, the movie is reinforcing that even when she kicks you out, she probably secretly regrets it later idea. Right, right. Yeah, trust me, if she says no, absolutely not, it means yes. Right. Yep. This is the, oh God, this is everything that's wrong with American society, both in terms of consent and also in terms of something that is, I think, less pernicious, but still very obnoxious, which is this lesson that we're teaching young boys that eventually become men, that if they just are relentless. Yes. Yeah. Like you see, and it, I mean, you see this in examples like the proposal at the Super Bowl in front of everybody. Like, <sighs> let's just put as much pressure on the woman as possible and have as many eyeballs on the situation so that they'd be embarrassed to say no. Right. Yeah. And they're going to think that's romantic. Apparently. Yeah. yeah. Well, I guess, you know what? Consider that incident incited by the standards of this script. So we're going to call that the end of Act 1, or at least we're going to call it close enough to give us a break. But we're going to be back in a flash with all the ceaseless tribulations that are redeeming love. Okay, what about this? Yeah, that's inciting a riot. Totally bogus, by the way. We should, like, actually do that one. We're we're not doing any of them. Hey, guys, what's up? Hey, Kara. Well... Eli heard that True Bill gets you out of free trials quickly and easily, so he committed a bunch of crimes, and we're just trying to sort through all of this stuff before we bring it to Andrew. Wait, what's True Bill? True Bill is the new app that helps you identify and stop paying for subscriptions you don't need, want, or simply forgot about. And the term free trial, very misleading in the first place. I would like to say that. No, I don't think it is. No, it's it's not. On average, people save up to $720 a year with Truebill. And because companies make subscriptions hard to cancel, Truebill makes it incredibly simple. Just link your accounts and Truebill will cancel your unwanted subscriptions in one tap. And your Truebill concierge is there when you need them to cancel unwanted subscriptions so you don't have to. I've actually been using Truebill to help me with my budgeting since they became a sponsor. They tell me when I overspend, when a large transaction hits my account, even where I can cut back on spending. All right, guys, I'm sold. Where do I sign up? Don't fall for subscription scams. Start canceling today at Truebill.com slash awful movies. Go right now. Truebill.com slash awful movies. It could save you thousands a year. That's Truebill.com slash awful movies. Got it. Thanks, guys. So do you want help with the legal stuff? Yeah, actually. Uh, Let me go get the other boxes. Boxes? Come on, dude. Poppy was misleading. He commits, like, a lot of crimes. He really does. From the makers of Redeeming Love comes the story of a woman in deepest despair. Oh, no, I just got hit by a car. And the man who would save her. Don't worry, I love you anyway. You, you love me even though I got hit by a car? Yes. I forgive you. Okay, there's nothing to forgive. I got hit by a car. Because sometimes when you're at your lowest, only love can save you. I will heal you with my love. Feel like I would need to heal from the car that hit me? With with my love. This summer, trauma porn. I love you, Angel. It's not 
my real name and the fact that you haven't bothered to ask is just a huge red flag, dude. It's red like my love. Okay. And we're back for more of this shit, and we're going to rejoin the action back in the doodly do, following up on what happened to little Angel after her mom died. Spoiler alert, she was sold into uh, sex slavery. Yep. Mm -hmm. Yep. So. Mm -hmm. Not unexpected. No. Yeah. Based on the tone. Yeah. And we see some guy, I don't know if this is supposed to be an uncle or a cousin, whoever wound up with custody of her has taken her to this brothel to, like, sell her to this guy, Duke. And he drinks Duke's brandy. This this scene is not without its reception because he drinks Duke's brandy. And because this movie needs to be cartoonishly violent and horrible at all times, Duke has him strangled in front of her and then stabs his dead body in the face. Yeah. But but because we have to be torturing Angel, makes her watch all of that. Right. Yep, that too. I just like... There was this moment where I felt like the movie wanted me to care about the guy that was getting strangled. And I was like, I mean, he just sold a child. So like, well, they don't even introduce him. Like, we don't even know who he is. No, I don't know <laughs> if he's an uncle or a cousin or what. Yeah. Yeah. Or if he just found her on the side of the road and needed to make a few bucks. But yeah. Yeah. So he has his his henchman strangle the guy to death. And then after he's very clearly dead, Duke walks over and stabs him with his sword. Okay. It feels like that just ruined the rugs, right? right. Like yeah, that's, exactly. that's a punishment to nobody except the rugs. <laughs> <laughs> I really wanted him to get stuck in the guy in the floor. He's just like, ah, oh, God sorry. damn it. Was, There's not like a blood. I was trying tunnel. to do a badass villain thing, but now I've got to sort of brace my foot against him. With my, <laughs> so my shoes are going to be. I like that. I'm digging it. Everybody's so Irish. Yeah. <laughs> Brain comes off on the cane sword. Oh, great. Now this is on. Here. God damn it's it. not going to fit in the hilt anymore. So. <laughs> So, yeah, so then we get a, like a montage of her growing up in the brothel, doing brothel chores, learning to read, being befriended by the older prostitutes there. Yeah, and I wasn't sure. Like, so this this is like we're establishing the creepy guy, right? So, so again, to recap, somebody who we don't know sells her into sex slavery or sells her to a, a brothel. And then an older man who I recognize. Okay. Is he like an actor? I'm sure he looks a lot like Brad Pitt. He does, he does look a little like I Brad Pitt. I spent the whole time just being like Brad Pitt. <laughs> I feel like I've seen this guy in other things. Anyway, he makes her sit on. So he makes her watch her uncle get murdered, then makes her sit on his knee. Mm -hmm. That part was weird. And then, like you said, there's this whole montage. And at this point, you're still not sure. Like, is he like raping her? Is he like her father figure? Is it both? I feel like it's supposed to be both. Luckily, this it's movie... Both. It's clearly yeah, both. The, the, luckily, this movie spares us from knowing that, yeah. I don't know. It's just not fun. Just uh, You don't trust anyone in this movie. Every man is just trying to, like, have sex with underage women. Yep. Literally every man in this movie <laughs> will be a massive piece of shit at some point. Yeah. They're all monsters. Just, just absolute monsters. But it makes you wonder, like, is that kind of what it was like? I mean, it's kind of still like that, right? But yeah, like, I, I, back I, in the day when there was no like social norms to not be like that, is that just what it was like? Probably. Yeah. Ugh. God. Yeah, the kind of questions that a comedy podcast loves to have drawn out. <laughs> yeah. Sorry. 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 No. Oh, yeah. yeah what else on. are you going to do with this? But no, comedy beat coming up. Ready? Yeah. Because then she fucks her dad. And that's pretty fucking funny. <laughs> oh hey, 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 she fucks her dad to death. Okay. <laughs> is this is this the darkest scene in the whole movie? I mean, I left really. Maybe later when she's performing. Well, okay. So what's what's amazing about this is that it's like, it's the darkest redemption in the movie, right? So she grows up in the montage. And so now she's, you know, she earns her wings or whatever, becomes a sex worker. And the first person they bring to her is her dad. He doesn't recognize her because she's all grown up. And then the movie just like cuts from like them going off together to him shooting himself. And we're like, oh, God, did she fuck her dad? And then tell him that. Yeah, because it pans to her. Sure did. And then the movie's like, yeah, no, yeah, yeah, that's exactly what happened. It was exactly that. Yeah, he shoots himself in the head. It pans to her half naked. And then in case you still didn't get it, they invent voiceover for one sentence in the movie. Yes, right, yeah. And they say, she fucked her dad, and then he kills himself. <laughs> yeah. In case you didn't get that. And can I just say? Uh-huh. Got him. <laughs> <laughs> got him. 
Christ. Look, Angel doesn't get a lot of victories in this movie. Yeah. Score one for Angel. But like, this is what I don't understand. Well, there's a lot that I don't understand, mm-hmm, but I mm-hmm. want you guys to help me understand this. Tell me the one thing you don't understand <laughs> about Angel fucking your dad and then he kills himself. Why didn't she just say, you're my dad? To get him. Yeah. No, but she, really? She wanted yeah. She wanted to have sex with her own father? It, it, as vengeance for, yeah. Mm-hmm. No, but that just shows that the person who wrote this doesn't think of her as human. Nope. I think you're not considering how good a prank that is, Kara. <laughs> <laughs> and then, okay, the other thing I was confused about, did creepy Irish surrogate father pedophile know that that was her dad? No, because that's it seems just, very it's just staged. He was like this one specifically. It's this guy. Yeah, no, it's supposed to be just a wild coincidence. Yeah. Mm. But then she has to run away because apparently there will be consequences for her fucking her dad to death if she doesn't. Which I feel like was a very weird move on pedophile pimp guy. Right. To be like, well, I'm very disappointed in you for fucking your dad. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Oh, yeah. That's weird. So, yeah. So she gets it. She makes her way onto a boat to California, the old fashioned pre Panama Canal way from Boston. And we watch her fall into disrepute on the boat. Like we've already watched her become a prostitute, but we have to watch it again. Again, yeah. this there will never be a nothing she ever does doesn't turn into prostitution. She like finds a nickel on the ground, she bends over to pick it up, and it's on a string, and she gets dragged into a brothel again. Yeah. Ah, yeah. Dang it! <laughs> By the end of the movie, she like trips and falls, lands in a feather bed. Ah, man, uh, what's that? Yeah, seventh time. That's on me. Well, and of course, just because otherwise she wouldn't suffer enough, we have to watch her like after the boat trip, she gets like jumped by a couple of the other sex workers that were on the boat with her and they take all her money. Yeah. And that's how she ended up working for the Duchess. Her misfortune and torture porn gets cart. I genuinely thought like the next person she met was going to like paint a tunnel on the wall and she was going to look and get hit by a train and then he just walked right through. It got that comical at a certain point. So, okay, so we cut back to the modern day. Lucky, who is one of her co-workers, is waking her up with some breakfast alcohol. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. But she's feeling sick. She's like, I guess the purity of that farmer boy that fell in love with her has rubbed off on her now and her sinful ways are getting to her. Yeah, she's got a love headache. Oh, is that what that is? Who the hell knows, right? Okay. <laughs> she's She's starting to feel real feelings. I guess. Yeah, right, right. Well, they, they, to the point where Lucky, the other character is like, they, oh, wait, sorry, are you wishing that you went with the farmer? And she's like, no, you know, that's the plot, but that's not what I'm feeling quite yet, I guess. <laughs> that would be incredibly stupid for me to be feeling that. No, you're right. You're right. There's no way you're feeling that. Right. But this is also where she realizes that, you know, her naive ass has been had by Duchess and she can't leave any time she likes and take her money with her. She's trapped there. Oh, This is where we find out the name of that guy. It's Magawan. Magawan. Yes. But if you feed him after midnight, though, he's (laughs) Gremluan, though. What the (laughs) fuck kind of dumbass shit? Why would you just... Okay. You know what? We just did an Ayn Rand trilogy. I'm fine. And to be fair, he's just like... He's a big white guy. He's a big white guy. Yeah. Like, there's no... His name's just Magawan for no reason. At one point, we do see a Power Ranger climb inside him to fight a giant monster, but that's way <laughs> later in the movie. <laughs> so they're saving something for the sequel, you know? Yeah. So yeah, but she goes to Duchess and she says, hey, can I leave and take my money? And she's like, no, no, there's still like an hour and 18 minutes of this shit. <laughs> yeah. So, and then of course, Magawan has to take her back to her room and beat her up because we haven't watched her getting beaten up for like two and a half minutes now. Well, first he like starts raping her. Like it's not just beating her up. It's like like sex beating up because we it's like how many sweaty, dirty zippers do we have to watch unzip in this movie? (sighs) So many dirty zippers. So gross. Super gross. And apparently Michael is now psychically connected to her a la (laughs) E.T. and Elliot. Yes. Yeah. Right. Because he wakes up seemingly knowing that she is being beaten at that moment. I, I guess he still needs his eight, right? Because he go, he doesn't go to the brothel until the next morning to get her. But yeah, he senses a disturbance in the force, which means if they're psychically connected, does that mean that like ever since the first time he met, he's been waking up being like, oh, she's fucking again. <laughs> fucking again. That's, that's 11 today. She a weird taste. In my mouth there. <laughs> um, so, 
Yeah, but so he gets to the brothel. He charges past Duchess and he runs into a room and he finds her all beat up. Oh, yeah. This is one of the weirdest scenes in the movie. Like, I mean, there's a lot of weird scenes in the movie, but she's like legit gross looking, by the way. Like the way they did her makeup. She's really, yeah. really okay. beat up. There's so many things we need to talk about. First okay. of all, we need to talk about the fact that he marries and buys her while she's asleep. That's what I'm saying. Like, why? He's like, okay, this is the weirdest part of the movie. He's like, you're really beat up. Everything looks bad. Maybe now I can convince you to come to the farm where I'll keep you safe. And she's like, yeah, okay, fine. I'm really beat up and unconscious. Well, no, that's the thing. She doesn't say, I, I <laughs> would be more impressed if this movie had a, yeah, okay, fine. She is literally asleep. And he's like, will you marry me now? It very clearly cuts to her saying nothing. And he's like, got it. Yeah. <laughs> my bride, load her in my cart. Well, they do. They do have her eventually kind of wake up enough to say yes. But that's not until after he's purchased her. Right. Yeah. Because Duchess says she can't leave until she pays me what she owes me. And then he's like, well, I'm sure this sweaty clump of money that I keep in my elbow apparently yep. will suffice <laughs> regardless of how much it is. And Famke Jensen is just like, yeah, nope, that's yep. That yep, is, that is exactly exact change. the amount. Wow. Yeah, there is an overt transaction that takes right. place with the good guy. The good guy yes. buys his wife. Well, and then he says, so, hey, do you want to be my my wife and, and live with me forever on my farm? Or do you want to stay here and get beat up? Those are your two choices. And she's like, I guess I'll go... <laughs> with you so he throws her in the back of his cart like a bag of fucking feed they didn't have shocks by the, that back then by the way <laughs> yep. throws her in the back like a fucking bag of feed and takes her home oh no this is like a horse cart yep also number two thing i have to talk about is the makeup so very clearly the makeup artists at this point were like i got a hold of the script this movie fucking sucks do you want to do just got stung by a bee face instead of beat up face and the girl was like oh my god do you think we'll get away with it and she was like we totally will so this entire scene which is supposed to be this horrific moment of rescuing she looks like i ate too much shrimp and she's just like <laughs> just like okay I'm to the she does. Yes. Her, her eyelids look like hamburger buns yeah yeah like that's all i can think about like her bottom lids <laughs> <laughs> and her top lids. Really wanted yeah. someone to come over and stab her with an EpiPen. Sorry, but I just had to. <laughs> just <laughs> got to get her. So, yeah. So the, the next morning she wakes up in, in this shitty little farmhouse. She's got a ring on her finger now, which means that while she was unconscious, he put it there. Right. Because that's romantic. Normal. It's very good. Good love story. Yeah. Nor oh, wait, 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 wait. We skipped one, I guess, if if there were important plot points. Oh, yeah. One important plot point is that the bad, the father pedophile, father figure pedo pedophile from Boston was like cross them on the road. Yeah, he was coming into town as they were leaving. What are the odds? But they showed him looking over. Did he not see her? She was exposed on an open air cart. She was, he said, well, there's a weird looking bag of feet he's got back yeah, there. She, you was all, right. she was all stung with bees. He couldn't tell. Yeah. Wouldn't put a human being back there. They don't have shocks back now. So. <laughs> oh, yeah. She was. Yeah. She had hamburger eyes. So oh, that, that must have been it. Yeah. <laughs> so, yeah. So she wakes up and she's like, wow, this sucks. And he's like, he's like, hey, you're awake. That's great. Hey, I have a dead lady's clothes for you to wear. They've been sitting here for several years. Would you like to wear my dead sister's clothes? And she's like, tight, 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 tight. Yeah. Right. Because they're like, here's my sad backstory. Mm -hmm. My sister died last year. And I'm like, I don't care. Like, right. so don't care. That doesn't endear me to you. Like, it's, it's, I don't feel bad for you. <laughs> like, you're a horrible person in this movie. Also, his accent. So he's going for a Southern <laughs> accent, but only in words that end in R. Right. You know, he's like, mm -hmm. yeah, those are the clothes of my dad. Say a star. <laughs> Just, yeah. oh, it's, he's so bad. So and then we cut to three weeks later, right? Because they don't want to have to keep doing the beat up makeup, right? They're like, we can't keep giving her hamburger eyes, guys. That's tough. That takes a lot of latex. But we're all out of plastic. Come on. <laughs> so, so we cut to three weeks later. And so this is super important. This will not be the first time. But so she escapes. <laughs> right. So if we want to make a good guy out of this character, here's what he does is he nurses her back to health and he says, now you can go wherever you want. Would you like me to take you into town? Would you like me to take you somewhere else? You can do whatever you want now. Right. That would be like the good guy thing to do. Get her out of the bad situation and then let her decide where she wants to go from there. But he's never, ever going to do that. Right. You're free. But no, he put a ring on her. He bought her. Right. Yeah. Of course, he's not going to do that. He owns her. Right. He owns her. 
So she has to escape multiple times. Yeah, she has to yep. escape from him. And they make this very explicit. That's the thing that I never understand about these movies. Like, he says something to her about, here's the ring that my mom handed me down or whatever. And she's like, blah, blah, this slave situation that you have me in. And he's like, marriage is not slavery. And I'm like, no, but... But this marriage is. Yeah, like, your religion says it is. Everything about this movie shows it is. And she explicitly is thinking this out loud and saying it out loud. Like, like, does the movie not understand that it's sometimes making really good points? Oh, yeah. She she cannot help but roast this movie throughout this movie. Yeah, yeah. it's so weird. Like, the main character gets it, but she's, yeah. like, the only one. When he said marriage isn't slavery at the end of the last scene, I really wanted her to, like, point to the Bible and be like, actually, no, if you look here, so you can see. Let oh, me show you something. Uh, Deuteronomy actually has rules and prices and everything. He's yeah. like, oh, fuck. I guess I, it is slavery. Know. And also, you did purchase me in the very yep. last scene. <laughs> yep. Like, that happened. Yeah, so he gets home. He sees that she's not there, so he chases her down. Right. Mm -hmm. He catches up with her and they want to make him chivalrous, I guess, is what they're going for. And he's like, she's like, I want to not be with you. And he's like, all right, well, I brought you water and a jacket. That's the chivalrous part. But the other part is I'm going to leave you here on the road a mile from the nearest <laughs> place of shelter whatsoever as it's getting dark and 19 miles from town. Yeah. yeah. You can either be a stranger's wife or you can get assaulted and beat up all the time. And I just wrote in my notes, romance. Yep. <laughs> yeah. So, yeah, so she walks the mile. He makes her walk it like he could at least stick around and say, like, OK, I could take you into town or take you back to that. But no, he makes her walk back in the partial fucking darkness. They didn't have streetlights in 1850. I just want to be clear. Oh, yeah. And for some reason, there's a river in the middle of the road. Right. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so she gets home and, and, and he's such a great guy that he brings her beans and washes her feet, which she's confused by <laughs> the movie. OK, this scene <laughs> fucking ruled. OK, I hated this movie, but this scene movie was very much going for like, isn't it romantic? But hey, ladies, if a man gently deshoes you and washes your feet after a long day on a dusty road, that is sexual for him. That is not a nice gesture. Yeah, she's like, why are you doing this? And he's like, I'm too Christian to just admit that I have a foot fetish. So Yeah, yeah except that her feet are like bleeding. Yeah. It's super gross, but he's still turned on by it, I guess. Yeah. Again, I don't want to go back down the wiki feet rabbit hole on this <laughs> podcast, but I can just say those motherfuckers were on this scene. They were on it. <laughs> they were on. They got angles on this scene the director didn't get. I don't know what cuts they were. But this was this was like a whole Mary Magdalene thing, right? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I Clearly. Guess. Like that's yeah. what this was. Which later she literally there's like it's so explicit. <laughs> yeah. yeah. They're, they're pretty <laughs> heavy handed. Yeah. They're gonna spell yeah. that out a little more heavy. Yeah, for us yeah, later. They're literally going to spell it out on yeah, the a giant yeah. sign. Yeah. Um, so, <laughs> so but so she wants to have sex, but he doesn't want to have sex. And even the movie is like, but they're married. He's allowed to now, right? And then she's like, can I ask you a question? Your religion is bullshit. And the scene ends. <laughs> <laughs> I Good dig for it. him. He, she's like, hey, you know how God like, forced me into sex slavery as a child and then let me fuck my own dad and then he killed himself? What do you think his uh, great and mysterious plan was for that? And he might as well just go, cut. So I don't yeah, and that's <laughs> the thing about this whole movie that's so confusing. Like the lead... She's a great actress. She's beautiful. She's strong. She's smart. Her character says all the smart things and like knows that she wants to be an independent woman. Like, and yet she's thwarted at every, at every decision. Yes. Cartoonishly thwarted. They make, and it's like they make her have a series of like horrible things that happen to her, but never by her, by like her own fault. Right. Yeah. It's, it's never because she's chosen. It's like they're not even writing a damsel that we should. Like, ah, uh, it's just infuriating. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. It's like if instead of the mo old movies where she's tied to the train tracks, there's a corpse that's been run over by several trains. Yes. <laughs> and the hero comes over and is like, wow, you shouldn't let yourself get tied to those train yeah, tracks. So I don't know so why much, you huh? tied yourself there of all places. I forgive you. So <laughs> <laughs> I just bought you. So the next morning, she agrees to play wife with him until her debt, her, you know, the elbow money is paid back. So we get a literal mansplaining montage. Oh, oh. yeah. 
he explains to her how to pluck a chicken and how to sew a field. But like weirdly sexually. He's got a oh, thing yeah. for that fucking Sexual chicken. Sexual chicken carcass. Like, it's, <laughs> I don't, yeah. What's amazing is what clearly happened is this a very hot but very stupid actor was given this montage and he was so excited not to be doing manual labor anymore. And they were like, okay, so you like teach her the things on the farm. And this actor didn't understand he wasn't supposed to make every activity sexy. <laughs> so he was like, why don't we fish and then we can clean out the outhouse. <laughs> And yeah, so yeah, so we have this mansplaining slash being poor is still pretty awesome montage. She can't fish at all now, but they're laughing together. So like, clearly it's working. No, <laughs> no. And we close this off with yet another they won't fuck yet scene. Yeah, yeah, yeah. They got to keep going back to that. She tries to fuck him and he he goes for an ice cold lake thing. Oh, yeah. So that's like a blue balls joke, like a yeah. Christy blue balls joke. That's a Christy blue balls joke. Oh, okay. It is. I assume that when he's like, I need to go for a walk, and like, you got to rub one out. It's because if you're going to rub one out, that's sinful anyway. You might as well <laughs> satisfy your wife. He does the ice walk and the dogs on the beach looking at him and the dogs like, dude, you're, you're married. Get your dick just, wet. Yeah, I don't, just, I don't understand yeah. what's yeah, wrong weird. with you. So that night, she dreams of the evil guy from Boston finding her. She d dreams that Duke finds her. She wakes up, and this is where he tells her to walk off her PTSD. A nice, fresh walk for her PTSD. Yeah. yeah, yeah. yeah she Literally in this scene, he goes, what are you afraid of? And I wrote in my <laughs> yeah. notes, all the rapists, man. She's afraid of all the rapists. Have you been watching any of these doodly doos? <laughs> Jesus. Jesus. Yeah, well, and, and then he's like, you know what you need is a walk. And she's like, you know, I think I just probably need years of therapy. I probably need you to leave me alone for a little while. And he's like, nope, walk. And she's like, okay, fine. But then he shows her a sunrise to make it all better. Yeah, and Jesus goes, you can have sex now. Yeah, so yeah, right. So she, he's like, he points to the sunrise and he's like, that's the life I want to give you. And and I'm like, the, that of a massive 4.6 billion year old ball of plasma what the fuck are you even <laughs> talking about and he says a light a life filled with light and it's just like but man they had like the candles were just for ambiance they had light in the brothel <laughs> but she says oh well you know what i don't long for death anymore and he's like see it's getting better all the time and she's like okay <laughs> here we go happens. oh god <laughs> uh, do you still want to die or are you better and she's like eh. 50-50. He's like, I'll take like, it. All right. All right. So you're saying <laughs> right. there's a chance. Yeah. So you want to fuck right now, right? That's what you're saying. Well, right. And she's just like, I still don't get why we can't fuck. And I'm like, I am with you. You're making me watch this guy act when we could be watching him fuck. <laughs> what the hell? But then when they finally get around to it, it's not even like they're fully clothed. Oh, God. Well, he's fully clothed, at least. Yeah. The first time they have sex. It's up against a wall, really? Yeah. Yes. Like, this is supposed to be romantic. Well, and, and I love to, so there's this moment, too, where they, they're they like, oh, you know what? There's a bed over here. Let's move to the bed. And so they have this uh, amazing scene where he has to lay her down on the bed, but she's topless, and they're still trying to keep the PG-13 rating. So he's got his hand over her boob the whole time. Yeah, it's weird. As though he's putting her down by her boob, right? <laughs> yeah, so, like, yeah. But he's, he's cupping it like he's catching a softball. It is not romantic. <laughs> also, I have to talk about the wall sex because this is my favorite part. So they're trying to do the wall sex thing where he hikes up her skirt and like, ooh, sexy. But they're trying not to freak out grandma over at the Dove channel. So he just reaches down and grabs her skirt. As I wrote in my notes, he's giving her a wedgie. Chicks love that. <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah. Uh, so they consummate their relationship, I reckon. Mm -hmm. Okay. I Just one last thing I have to talk about about this sex scene, and it is the violin in the background. Oh, uh, yeah! What is this music? The sex scene goes on so long that the violinist is forced to vamp. It's, <laughs> it's, it's like, like doo -doo 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 -doo. <laughs> and then like six minutes later, it's like, nah, 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 nah. they can't still be fucking. Nah, 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 nah. <laughs> so fucking good. So okay, so now it's time for us to meet Paul, who is in my in my. By far the best actor in the movie. You, he actually no, really... I completely disagree with you. Really? Ooh. Paul is just 
Paul went to the I'm not quite Tom Hardy school of acting. Oh, see, I love Tom Hardy, too. I'm so, obsessed okay. with Tom Hardy, but Paul is not Tom Hardy. He's just another guy trying to be Tom Hardy. Literally everything he does is Tom Hardy-esque. I mean, we're all trying to be Tom Hardy. Yeah, that's kind of hold that against. <laughs> I can't fault somebody. Like his whole brilliant acting is just grunting a lot. He does grunt very well. He does, does, does quite a bit of grunting. That's all he's doing. It's just yeah. he just like watched every Tom Hardy movie in it's advance. Really of this. good grunting. Okay, so, <laughs> but we meet him. He's wandering across the desert. So apparently, he is the the brother in law. His his wife was the sister who died, and then he went off on a year-long bender as a gold prospector, and now he's coming back sheepishly to the farm to tell Michael that he's a failure, right? He tells Michael, mostly I just worked hard for nothing and drank, and I wrote in my notes, the Heath Enright story. <laughs> <laughs> but this is, he meets Michael's wife, and of course she's wearing still the dead wife's clothing, yeah, but that's a cover. Like, he sees her and clearly knows she's she's a sex worker. Right, right. And he's looking at her like, what are you doing in my brother-in-law's house? And they see him staring at her like she's garbage. And then he catches himself and is like, right. oh, you're wearing my dead wife's clothes. This, that's why I'm staring at you. That's what I'm freaking out about. Yeah. That's why I was trembling with rage. I promised no one would wear... Her clothes. But really, it's like, oh, yeah, I saw you that night when we had sex, when I paid for you. Right. So he memorized all the prostitutes he visited. Clearly. Yes, in his drunken stupor. Yeah. So let's face it. This is this is a girl you would remember. Well, she was. She was the one that had the lottery. That's true. Right. You know, she yeah, was exactly. the one, yeah, you remember the prostitute that has the lottery. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. And they have this mini confrontation, which this is such a stupid subplot because it could be resolved with two sentences and it's just like the movie trying to elongate itself. He's like, how did you trick Michael into marrying you? And she's like, I didn't. I actively resisted him marrying me. And then while I was half conscious, he bought me and he was like, liar. <laughs> and then he does not ask Michael nope. what happened. Nope, never does. <laughs> this conflict will continue for like the almost the rest of the movie. <laughs> <laughs> and could be resolved at any time by him going, hey, is how did you meet? That would be it. But yeah, he's like, Michael deserves better than you. You're a filthy, filthy whore. And she's like, well, you just have to accept it now. And he's like, yeah, but I can dump coffee all over your shit. It's what I can do. <laughs> so he does. So at this point, I completely have lost interest in the movie and I'm playing like Wordle. Yeah. <laughs> and, and then I remembered, oh, I'm not watching this like by choice. <laughs> like I, I'm watching this for the show. I actually have to pay attention and started watching it again. But I was like, I'm not rewinding. I can't. No, I, just can't. I can't. That would be too you. much. I've never supported you more than you wrote. I was playing phone games. What did I miss in your notes, Kara? <laughs> I've never supported you more fiercely. <laughs> So, yeah, I don't know what happened there. Well, yeah, and all you missed is the scene where Paul goes out and tells Michael, you know, she used to be a sex worker. And he's like, yeah, no, I know. And he's like, oh, uh, well, that fucks up. I, then I just dumped coffee on her shit for nothing, I guess. <laughs> but he calls her trash and Michael punches him because, you know, he's a good guy who punches people for insulting his wife. Okay, okay. But there is a funny thing about the punch, right? He punches in him and is like, I'm sorry. And they have too many lines left in the scene where he has just been punched in the face. So they spend the rest of the scene with him being like, oh, it's just really my eyes. Are, I'm not crying. My eyes are watering. So it's just. Yeah. Okay, yeah. So the recipe is two cups of flour and three eggs. And it's just so long on him <laughs> sniffing back his bloody nose. See, this is why I was playing games on my phone. I yeah. have no mm -hmm. idea. You I'm glad I much. missed that. I'm glad you got to play Wordle. <laughs> I, I, I say I wish you had played a little bit longer because then you would have been able to miss the the scene following that one, which is where we reveal her forced abortion history. Right. This is maybe the it's it's one of the top five most horrific scenes. It but is. It's hard to really rank the top five. They're all equally horrific. Yeah. Well, so Michael's telling her about how hope he hopes one day they'll have a family together, and she's like Ew, about that. And then we flash back to her being undergoing a, a forcible abortion back when she was with Duke. After she was raped. Yeah. Well, yeah. Uh -huh. And now look, this movie is going for scary, terrible trauma, and it does a pretty good job. But they do miss on one account, which is that apparently scary abortion guy 
is going to like use a giant pair of bike lock shears to mm-hmm. do her abortion. <laughs> Look, this is a terrible scene and it's gross in a lot of ways, but this doctor like menacingly heading towards her with a pair of fucking garden shears. Like, yeah. oh yes, these very useful. Yes, you you medic- use the jaws of life actually in a situation yeah. like this is the tool that you would. Yeah. Whoo. Ugh, gross. I think I wrote gross like 900 times throughout yeah. my yeah. notes. Just gross. So, and then we get yet another of the hardest scenes in this movie. She has to escape again. Oh, yeah. God, this movie. Right? Yep. Escape number two, for those of you keeping track. Yeah, right. This is escape number two. Well, escape number three, if you're, but escape number two from Michael. Yeah. Right. So she bums a ride into town with Paul. Paul's going to get like a horse and get some farm and stuff so he can start his farm back up. So she bums a ride with him. Oh, yeah, and he's super gross. He's, like, trying to get her. He's, like, on it, mm-hmm. which I guess we we saw that coming, but I didn't, I don't know. I don't know why I didn't quite expect it. Because there's a character that hadn't raped her yet in the movie. They have exactly. that, yeah. At this point, I, I wrote in my notes, at this point, if she gets too close to the dog, I'll be worried the dog's going to yes. be like, so yes. angel, bar, 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 bar. Right, yeah. And so at this point, I'm really confused because I'm like, who is this movie for? They, thank yes. you. Uh, this, like, I, I literally wrote this. I said, "How? who is this for? Yeah, like, Whose fantasy is this? Who is enjoying watching this poor woman get raped over and over by every person she trusted in her life? Yep. And just, just everything that could have been even, not even sacred, but remotely trustworthy gets ruined. And like, is it supposed to be sexy? I don't get it. I have no idea. This is a rom- a romance movie. I honestly just think it's got to be a, a misogyny thing, right? It's got to it just be misogynists be. loving watching this. And, and that's what you get for being such a whore. Well, and that's what I put. Is this enjoyable for a single person on the planet other than an incel fuck nut? Right. I mean, right. Yeah, exactly. Like, but does it like have to be? Market to incels. Yeah. yeah. Noah is a Jaguars fan. And he was like, okay, this is enough suffering. Right. Yeah, suffering. exactly. <laughs> So, yeah, so but he gets her out in the middle of nowhere and he's like, how are you going to pay for this pizza? Right. And so and of course, because we can't just imply it, we have to like then cut to him zipping his pants up and her coughing and puking and, or whatever. So. Oh, right. And so this is the first time she's like puked. Yeah. From, you know, I thought that was a pregnancy cue. It's not. Oh, and I just thought it was like, a, oh, but she was really in love now. So now when she sells, you know, when oh, she yeah, does a transaction. It actually she feels like, she has real yeah. human feelings now right. because a man before loves she was just her. a receptacle. Of her right. Now she's a people. Yeah. 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 Although I do have to say again, terrible movie, terrible scene. This did start to follow the Hosea having another man's child, naming the child, not my child through line. And I was like, oh, my God, if Paul Jr. is named not of my people, this movie might win me back. (laughs) But no. This is where I noticed that the actress in like certain lights sort of look like Amy Adams meets Elle Fanning. Yes. Ooh, sure. There's definitely an Amy Adamsness to her that bothered me throughout. Yeah. And like a little bit of an Elle Fanning thing. And then okay. later there's like a Lindsay Lohan kind of a moment. Interesting. Like she's, I don't know, she's an interesting, yeah, she's a shapeshifter. Okay. So yeah, so, but he takes her to town post the raping and she gives him a stern talking to. I mean, she, to be fair, the stern talking to she gives him is like, Truth telling. Oh, yeah. Yeah. She like makes a, a really kind of important commentary about men of her era and about how like really he is like weak and he is not a good person. And and she's she's the victim in this and she's been strong the whole time. And at least she's been honest and clear and he's a coward. And you're like, again, again, the writers, it's like they get it. Right. But then they don't get it. But then they don't. Then they un, <laughs> they somehow un, un get getting it. it. Yes. Yeah. Honestly, instead of calling it redeeming love, they should have called it ungetting it. Yes. <laughs> All right. Well, I'll tell you what, we're not allowed to take a break after every scene, but holy fuck, we earned one at this point. So we're going to pause there. First, let me give Act to the hard sell. Can we experience enough vicarious suffering in time? Will we watch Angel get her fingernails ripped out by Libyan terrorists? <laughs> Will she audition for Harvey Weinstein? Find out the answers to these questions and more when we return for the masochistic conclusion of redeeming love is it working it seems like it man keep eating hey guys what you doing oh man can i tell noah i mean i guess 
Okay, so Kara actually gave me some famous people crackers so I can get all healthy and tan. She gave you crackers that will make you tan? Mm Mm-hmm. Yep, sure did. But Eli, if you want to eat healthier, why not just try HelloFresh? What's HelloFresh? With HelloFresh, you get farm-fresh pre-portioned ingredients and seasonal recipes delivered right to your doorstep. Skip trips to the grocery store and count on HelloFresh to make home cooking easy, fun, and affordable. That's why it's America's number one meal kit. It's true. Even before they were a sponsor, I was a HelloFresh customer because they have awesome vegan options. I make their creamy mushroom pasta all the time. Not to mention, last night, I made their creamy southwestern black bean soup. And I think it's going to go into the regular rotation for sure. Of course, all that changes now that I've got these famous people crackers. Okay, but that's got to be super expensive, right? Well, actually, according to the Zagat Dining Survey, HelloFresh is 72% cheaper than a restaurant meal of the same quality. And you can save, on average, over $65 per month when you order HelloFresh instead of grocery shopping. That's money back in your pocket. Cheap and healthy meals delivered right to my door. I'm in. How do I sign up? Go to HelloFresh.com slash Awful16 and use code Awful16 for up to 16 free meals and three free gifts. That's right. Go to HelloFresh.com slash Awful16 and use code Awful16 for up to 16 free meals and three free gifts. Thanks, guys. All right. Back to my famous people crackers. Nom, 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 nom. Those are just saltines, aren't they? Well, yeah, I figured I earned a little revenge for this week's movie. Sure. Okay. Plus, I told him if he drinks water, they stop working. Oh, well done. <laughs> so dry. Oh, Michael, it sure has been tough for me out here it, to be a prostitute in the mining town here in the middle of California. Well, indeed, it has, but... Okay, so this is the second sketch where I'm playing Michael and Eli's playing Angel. Okay, so Kara is calling beeps now. Just We're yeah, all so calling... We just figured that with the content that we're working with, the gender reversal would kind of sidestep the ugliness of this movie a bit. No, 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 I get that, but are you sure that's it? Well, I, I, I mean, I think so. Yeah, what are you implying about my... Well, you guys still aren't doing video, right? Yeah, no, just audio. Yes, only audio podcast. So why has Eli been in full costumes? And I mean, different costumes for each one of these sketches. Uh, it helps me get into character. But do, we, do you have another costume change later in the show? Eli? No. Okay. I got to hand it to him, though. That, that smoky eye is on point, though. Oh, no, that's true. It looks great. And we're back for still more of this shit. We're going to rejoin Angel showing up in town just to find that the old brothel she was going to go back to work in has burned down in her absence. Oh, yeah. But hey, credit to the movie. This is the first bad thing that has happened in the movie that hasn't happened directly to Angel. Well, so but, we're looking up. But it has because yes. two of her best friends burned to death in the fire. Her only friends in the whole world, basically. Right. Her only friends in the whole world and the guy that tells her about it has to go into all this detail. It's like, yeah, we could see him screaming for so long. <laughs> we hear it and there's just they were flaming and they were like waving their arms and yeah, oh, so you could... I painted it. Do you want to see this paint? I made it. <laughs> right, yeah. It's just, just on and on. Flip the paint. Ages. He's like, but if you want to go back to work, I could put you to work at, at my brothel. I'm like, this little fucking mining town was supporting two brothels? <laughs> also, he offers her a garbage deal. And it's not like I know the economics of prostitution in like old mining towns in the West. <laughs> but he says, basically, we'll go 50-50 so long as I can like rape you anytime I want and don't have to pay for it. And she's like, deal. When earlier on the boat... She was getting 90%. Yeah. Yeah. And giving the pimp 10%. Yeah. I don't know. So why'd she take this without negotiating? Who even knows? I I don't get this character at all. Yeah. Yeah. She was in California too. So you know she should have gone through an agent, right? Right. Yeah. 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 Classic rookie mistake. So... So then we, we cut back to the farm. Paul is getting back to the farm and Michael knows that he took her back into town to you know, I don't know, just reignite her sinful ways or whatever. Right. So he's very mad at Paul and makes Paul leave. Hmm. And Paul's an asshole. Yes. The whole time. Yeah. He's like, I just fucked her. Well, he doesn't tell him, but like you can tell that he just fucked her. Yeah. Well, and, and Paul is such a, the, the worst thing about the character of Paul is that there's no comeuppance, right? Like, like this character deserves to have like, 
you know, at the least, at the very least, the Stay Puft Marshmallow Man, once he melts, has to fall on this guy, right? But right, right. Nothing. Yeah, exactly. We get absolutely nothing in terms of comeuppance for Paul. If anything, he gets a redemption story at the yes. end of the movie. I was going to say, the title applies to Paul. Right, really, yeah. more than anybody else. You're right. Yeah, yeah. Scott Free. Just Scott Free. So yeah, so so Michael comes bursting into the bar. This movie is taking a fucking mulligan at this point, right? Michael <laughs> comes bursting in the bar where she's working and now as a sex worker again and rescues her again. Mm-hmm. Yeah. With his terrible fight choreography. <laughs> oh, God, yes. oh, this scene. Look, I'm not going to lie. I was super bummed out at this point. I was like, I am not good enough friends with Kara to have asked her to watch this. This is gross. Like, I'm not enjoying it. I have to write jokes and fill time about this shit. And then Paul comes. They might as well be Wait, counting with their lips. You wrote Michael. Paul, but Michael. 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 I wrote Michael. you and warned you about that, that you had put the wrong yeah, name. He did. Yeah. He because did nobody me. cares. You know, like, it doesn't matter really. <laughs> right. Like, yeah. Yeah. But but Michael Michael bursts in and they might as well have their lips moving with the count. He's just like it's like come at me karate, right? Like it's, yeah. it's okay, but then you punch here. No, little no. Hot. You come from come from above. Come from above. Above. <laughs> yeah. It's like they worked for two months choreographing that scene, and that scene was. 15 seconds long. Oh, it was so it's silly. It's the shortest fight scene of any movie ever. He goes into the room and he's like, do you want to be here or not? And she's like, no, I want to escape with you. He's like, weird that that would be your motivation now. She's like, right? And then they go to leave. <laughs> and and the guy who hired her says, she ain't going nowhere. And like his two heavies or whatever uh, surround him. And so Michael starts rolling up his sleeves. And I'm like, oh my God, is he a karate ninja? Is he a karate ninja? And he is he a is fucking a karate, karate ninja. ninja. <laughs> so. Just to be clear, just to be clear, this movie is now more problematic and sexist than the Bible it is pretending <laughs> to be based on. <laughs> At least the book of the Bible, yeah. Yeah. So yeah, so they have this very awkward ride back home. Where she's like, hey, did Paul tell you that uh, he raped me on the way? And he's like, well, he didn't have to. You, you just had, you could tell. Like, what, did you, you smelled it on him? What? Yeah, clearly. He was doing that kind of walking you do when you got a sticky dick, but you haven't done the washcloth yet. I could tell. Trust me. <laughs> <Jesus Christ>. <laughs> so, <laughs> yeah, but he's, but he forgives her. He forgives her, her for getting raped by Paul. Yeah. Of course. By the way. Paul will be in the rest of this movie now like that has not happened. Yep. (laughs) Yep. He'll just mope about. So, okay. So that night, Michael cries in the barn and she watches on. So she feels bad about what she's done to him by getting raped. Right. Yeah. Yep. So she goes to wash the prostitution off of herself. Uh huh. In the river. In the river. Yeah. And, but, and her hair is conveniently covering her boobs the whole time. Right. Yes. But we get to see some awfully jiggly side boob for a Christian movie. Mm-hmm. True. True. But then he, he shows up and he forgives her again more explicitly for all the things that have happened to her. Oh, right. He like puts a, he puts a jacket on her and like takes her back on the shore and is like, you're damaged, but it's okay. And then he's like, let me tell you my story. Yeah. <laughs> Let me tell you my origin story. And you're like, okay, he's going to have a dark backstory and that's going to l- add some levels to his character. Nope. I was too good for slavery. That's my <laughs> backstory. Oh, everything about this character is so ridiculously one-dimensionally hagiographics, right? So yeah, he's like, I lived, I grew up on a plantation, but I was an abolitionist. He's like, wow, how incredibly unlikely. Historically speaking, he's like, yep, pretty <laughs> unlikely. Yep. But I couldn't abide owning slaves. So my dad tried to get me to rape a slave girl once so I would know how great it was to be a slave owner. But I didn't. To which we're supposed to be like, oh, wow, he's quite a gentleman. He could rape the girl. Yeah, which is oh, my goodness, to. man. What a, he's so romantic. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Not raping a slave, my goodness. Right, yeah, exactly. And and all the ladies in the movie theater are supposed to be like swooning. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> well, I love it. And he's like, and I left that very night. And she's like, so, but did you, did you leave or did you fuck her and then leave? Did you come or what? Yeah, yeah. They have to clarify. Right, that. And right. And then literally the next line is, should we plant some walnut trees? It is! Oh, it's the is the what the fuck is happening? Who? Who got into that script writer's room and was just like, 
do you think we should plant walnut trees? And they kept it. Honestly, the only way that line could be better is if Milk Girl had delivered it. <laughs> right, yeah. And she had popped out of the ground and been like, this would be better for walnuts. <laughs> <laughs> biggest non sequitur like what is happening oh. so yeah so the mulligan continues we have the her learning to farm montage again but this time wait 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 i sorry i have to interject when when they're literally like should we plant some walnut trees out of the blue i just love this too much he says fruit in the summer nuts in the fall oh that's right he does like he said that line to her uh throwing that out there Fruits in the summer, nuts in the fall. Theme of my orgy. Okay, all right. Thursday. <laughs> all right. You guys no, want to come? It's good to have a theme. I Oh, it's so bad. Neither of you replied to your Evite. So. <laughs> so. <laughs> so then she gives the farmer's wife thing another go, but this time she can fish, etc. And now we have to shoehorn in this other family as a as a group of characters. You know how the best stories have to have an incident incited every 46 seconds? Jesus. Yeah, it's always great to introduce major characters in the third act there. <laughs> so yeah, so they come across this family that's got a fucking flat wagon tire or something. They don't even bother. Right. And they're like, well, why don't you just live here now forever? And they're like, that's a great idea. We should do that. Yep. <laughs> Yeah, it's very Mormon. I, I'm getting like my own weird PTSD stuff going on. Okay, all yeah. of these scenes. It's very like take me back to my childhood because you know when you when you're raised Mormon, you like reenact being a pioneer. Right? Heck yeah, yeah. you do. That's like a huge part of their like oh yeah their you know origin story. And so yeah, there's like covered wagon parades. And like people wear the weird outfits. And yeah, it was making me really twitchy. Woof. They hire actors for the reenactment they do in Utica, New York. And if this wasn't actually a full time job, I would take that job <laughs> and wreck it. I feel like we can give you time off for that, Eli. We'll talk after the record. So yeah. All right. Yeah. We got a plan. So, but yeah, they invite the family to, so the, the family, by the way, the, the wife is pregnant. They've got like two kids, one of whom is like a teenager. Oh, yes. I love this. And the teenage girl is like, can we be friends? And she's like, why would you want to be my friend? And then she's like, cause you're cool. Tell me all about how you met your husband. And she's like, well, I was a prostitute and he bought me. And she's like, Ooh, was it with sweaty elbow money? It was with sweaty elbow money. Yeah. <laughs> Like she just straight up answers it, like straight yeah. up, doesn't hide. And and the little girl, to her credit, is really cute. She's like, "Oh, you're being serious," and she's like, "Yeah." And she's like, "Well, I still want to be your friend." Yep. I'm like, oh, that's that's nice. Yeah. Will you teach me the three sixty twist? You know, we'll talk about it later. We'll talk about it later. No big deal. <laughs> so yeah, so sometime later, like apparently the the this is after the mom had the baby, but they have themselves a little little hoe down. Mm -hmm. Okay. Did you guys expect a musical number in this movie at well, this point? Here's the thing. Okay. I have to say, part of this movie really got to me because they're playing, like, in parts of the movie, the soundtrack is, like, songs I already listened to. Oh, wow. And and it, like, it was ruining them. And I was like, <laughs> no, no, no. I was, like, forcing, like, don't make it an association, like, no classical conditioning, no, or operant conditioning. Like, no, no, no. You know? And so then, yeah, they're at their good old fashioned hoedown and like dad of the, of the pioneer family is like a legit good banjo player and singer. And yeah. I'm like, God, I actually am enjoying this. Yeah. They, they, well, they, they beat you down to a certain point and just like, Oh, wow. Nobody's getting abused and the music isn't bad. Sure. I'll take it. I'll take all of this. Right. Yeah. And then, and then Paul's there and everybody likes Paul again. I don't, I don't like Paul. What? Well, yeah. They, they, Paul apologizes to Michael for raping Angel in the middle of a hoedown montage. And we as viewers are supposed to go like, well, Paul has learned his lesson. There yeah, you go. Yeah, because he apologizes yes. to the husband for raping the wife. Swing your partner, raft and rat. Right. Apologize to your brother for raping his wife. <laughs> yeah, because that's, you know, that is property. And, and actually, the law was written that way. Mm -hmm. Like, when a man raped another man's wife, the man would take, the man would go to, to, 
to the courthouse. Yeah. Because it was a sin against or like a transgression against the husband. Also, also a sin against the husband, though, because that, you know, that law came from the Bible. So right, right, right. right. Yeah. Oh. There's this supposed to be sentimental moment where the people who've just moved in, the Mormons are like, we're naming our youngest son, the one who was just born, Michael, after you, Michael. And Paul is there. And I really wanted Paul to be like, do you mind if I have sex with your kid? Can I have sex with your kid? <laughs> yeah. I'm sorry. That's my thing. That's oh, kind of my thing. But I was going to apologize later. Okay. I'll, I'll. <laughs> and then I realized. <laughs> There were still 30 minutes How left the- in this movie. <laughs> You're like, what is this movie going to take another mulligan? Spoiler, this movie is going to take another. <laughs> it is. So, yeah, so we, we cut to Michael and Angel sow in their fields. And this is where she has to break it to him that she can't have any kids anymore because of the forced abortion thing. And he wants a baby. So she, she, he's never going to be happy with her. Right. And I was like, wait, why would she be able to have kids? But she makes it explicit that the horrible doctor ensured when he gave her an abortion without her permission that she could not have kids again. Like he intentionally mutilated her for that purpose. Right. And Michael's response to this is not, I don't care. I can forego my desire to have a family because I love you and I want to be with you or we can adopt or anything like that. He's like, I don't know. Maybe God will miracle a baby into you. Oh, yeah. He's like, (laughs) never say never. Yeah. Eh? Right. I'm like, wrong (laughs) answer, bro. Yeah. But right before that, he says, I love you no matter what. But also, I'd love you a whole lot more if you had my kid. Yeah. But I also, I I, I refuse to believe that that is true about you so that I can continue to love you. Because mostly, that's why I purchased you. Yeah. So, oh, God, this is so, it's all so fucking boring. So, yeah. So, we watch them eat dinner and have more fully clothed sex. Uh, yeah, like what? Yeah. Why? There's no cutting room floor on this movie. No, yeah, exactly. I, well, I, I do love the end of this scene, though, because he goes, I love you, Angel. And she's like, mm-hmm, that's nice. That's nice. <laughs> Cut. I love spending time with you, Michael. <laughs> so then we cut to, she, okay, so they've just had a, a lovely night of food and love making. The next morning, we cut to her folding up a letter and wrapping her wedding ring up with it because apparently, yes, we are taking another mulligan and she's running away for a third time, but this time Wait, not what? because she wants to escape, but because she doesn't think she's a good enough woman for him. He needs someone right. to have kids. This didn't happen in Hosea, by the way. Like, nope. if you watch this movie, you're like, oh, I get it because then his wife, she ran forth three times and you're like, that's where they're at. Nope. They chose for this movie to be this boring and repetitive. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, so, so to be clear, her motivation is that pilgrim guy or pioneer guy, um, mm-hmm. Mormon guy's daughter, who is her best friend, who's a child. Yes. She's like 13, would be a better wife for him because she can bear children. Yes. That's her actual motivation. So she leaves go back to being a sex worker or at least, you know, or to do something. Yeah, to do something. Right. And she leaves a letter that she gives to the 13 year old yeah. girl saying like, hey, I'm leaving. But, you know, much like an, a, a discarded piece of furniture, I would like to leave you my husband. Mm-hmm. I mean, look, she's been bought and sold like six times in this movie. Nobody can blame her. That's for fair. Being like, True. Hey, I think you're allowed to just give dicks and vaginas True. away. Yeah. So. I leave you one coupon for one bad actor. Yeah. yeah. So, yes. And then she hitches a ride with a guy with a comical number of pans on his wagon. <laughs> who doesn't rape her. Right. Who That's, doesn't yeah, the, rape. Yep. The movie has turned now. Things are getting better. <laughs> yeah. It's weird. Like, as she goes to San Francisco, like, shit turns around for her. Right. Really, it seems like she like, should she just... just really need to, to get out of paradise, I think. I was so traumatized by this movie that the rest of everything that happens in this movie, I'm like, oh, no, it's coming. Yeah, it's come. Yeah. Literally the old man who helps her up under the wagon. I was like, he's going to get her. He's going to yep. get her. Yeah. No. Yep. Go for the eyes, Angel. <laughs> Take his horse. <laughs> so, so, yeah. So, but she instead she goes to San Francisco and gets a job as a cook with a guy who's just like, I'll hire you as a cook and not even rape you. And yeah, it's like, oh. yeah. the movie knows the movie yeah. knows. <laughs> right. So it explicitly spells out to us like, and by the way, he's not going to rape her. Oh, yeah. He literally is like, you can have your own quarters right next to the kitchen. And there's a big lock on the door. Yeah. <laughs> that's, 
how they spell it out. Yep. So yeah, exactly. Stupid. Which, by the way, any other context but this movie, way creepy. Yeah. Right? <laughs> if I was like, hey, Kara, when you're in town for the New York live show with Skeptics Guide, you uh-huh. can come stay with me. There's a huge lock on your door. Like a big... yeah, I'd be like, why is that? Why are you telling me that, Eli? Is it which side? It's, it's on my side. Yeah, right. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> which side of the door? Yeah. <laughs> And so, okay, but back at the farm, of course, everybody's trying to talk Michael into going after her, but he's sick of this movie's cyclical bullshit, and he just wants to get on with it, right? Oh, yeah, he's like, and, and like, he's trying to make some sort of, like, incoherent point about free will, but you're like, I don't even know what your motivation is at this right, point. Right, yeah, like, like, uh, free will mattered to you, you know, that, that, I don't know what your motivation has been to this point, but yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So, okay, so... But her restaurant business, now that she's the cook, the restaurant's just taken off. She's doing great. But damn it if one day Duke's henchman, the guy that she ran away from in Boston, doesn't see her through the window. Wait, so this is the father figure character slash pedophile. That it's yeah. it's his henchman it's his that henchman. sees her. Yeah. Okay, okay. Uh-huh. okay. And so, of course, he burns down her restaurant because burning down places that she works is a, like kind of a thing. Right. God, it's like she's finally making a good life for herself. And some fucking man has yeah. to come fuck it up. Uh-huh. Ugh, God, it's just heartbreaking. This movie is legit heartbreaking. But it would be if it wasn't so fucking cartoonish. Right. I was I expecting know. her to like go to another whorehouse and then she comes in and that bed is on fire. And it's like, ah, <laughs> oh, damn beans. Yeah. But the, the thing that keeps you holding on sort of is that she is very good. Like yeah, she, she is, is a good good. actress and she keeps kind of the, you know, she keeps going even in spite of all of this shit. Right. It, th- that's the thing. And that's one, one of the things that makes this so difficult is that she actually does sell all of this ridiculous yes. stuff. Suffering. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. And then so she's cleaning up after the fire. And of course, Duke shows up and he's like, now you have to be my prostitute again. And she's like, I don't want to be your prostitute. He's like, I'll kill the nice man who told you he would give you a big lock so you wouldn't get raped if you don't be my prostitute. And she's like, oh, well, I guess I have to be your prostitute now. Look, if, if I guess I have to be a prostitute forever. That guy was nice to me once. Yep. Yeah, I didn't know. Who is the, okay, yeah, what was the what was the backstory here? He's like, if you don't come with me, I'm going to kill Virgil Harper. Yeah, and we're yeah. supposed to know that that's the guy who just gave her a job at the restaurant. Oh yeah, yeah. We're all to all of our notes. Say who is Virgil right, right. Harper? Right, I have to look through IMDb and go. Wait, was he in this? Oh Jesus! Oh, okay, it's the guy with the lock. And this is the point where I predicted that the big payoff at the end, which is a teeny tiny payoff, would be her giving her real name because yeah. at some point. They foreshadow. He's like, come on, Angel. And she's like, that's not my name. And I'm right. like, oh, God, she's going to tell her real name to Michael and they're going to live happily ever after. Yeah. Uh, I wish her name had been Hamburglar or whatever it <laughs> Gomer, is. Yeah, right. Gomer. Gomer. So, so, yeah. So he takes her back to his casino brothel. And just in case this movie hadn't been hard enough for you to watch, he has to kick his child bride out of the bed. No, literally. And she's yep. young. Like 11. Yeah. No, like eight. Okay, sure. Very young. So you're like, okay, there's a young child sleeping in his bed. Maybe it's his daughter. No. Maybe they're just really poor. And then they're like, no, we're going to make this pedophilia. Let's, really let's make it explicit. Say he actually has two. He has two rapey girls that he keeps. And, and, and then at the end of this scene, he's going to go in the other room and audibly rape them so that we have to hear their screams. And we're going to listen to yes. Yeah. Jesus, what? fuck this movie. The fuck? Oh, oh, doing lines of dead puppy at the end of the scene. We're just like, oh, yeah. okay. And Angel's like just crying in a rumpled mess on the floor, like reliving all of her childhood trauma. Yeah. yeah. Like we have to watch this whole thing play out. It's fun movie. Fun, yes. fun, fun. Or, yeah. Uh, yeah. Noah, you wrote fuck this movie. And I think that's, um, yeah. <laughs> that nails it. Well, and then I wrote, though, to be fair, when your source material is the Bible. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, true, yeah true, true, true. That's fair. Yeah. <laughs> So and then and we cut immediately from that to a little dance number, a little ragtime music and a dance number. Yep, yep, yep. And he's about to take her on stage. He's like, I got to show off my best prostitute on stage. And I'm like, if she does a tight five, right? Like if she goes <laughs> out there and she says, who's drinking tonight? I will. I mean, I won't love the movie, but I'll at least love the guts it had at the end. Right. What's with men always leaving the toilet seat up? Am I right? Yeah. So but instead <laughs> she starts praying to Jesus. Oh, yeah. She gives, she tries out a little Michael juice. Yeah. Michael magic. To be clear, according to the world of this movie, 
God was sitting there watching her <laughs> pimp rape children. Mm -hmm. And then she was like, hey, I would love if that stopped. And he was like, all right. Since you asked nicely, right. I'll send your dead mom back as a ghost to tell you the game plan. Yeah. And it was a pretty good game plan. I mean, I'm glad it didn't backfire. Sure, sure. sure could have backfired. <laughs> yeah. So, yeah. So so they introduce her to the stage and he's like, yes, yeah, so what possible bad could come of giving her a microphone right now to a group <laughs> of strangers? And she's like, uh, she's like, hey, so um, he's raping children upstairs. This guy right over here. And luckily, as you said, that didn't go bad. That could have very easily been like, really, how much, uh, how much for the, uh, but no, the people are furious and, and they rebel against him and, and she manages to, to run off, right? Ooh, and, and the only other black person in the movie saves her. Yep. <laughs> he just attacks the henchman. He's a total badass. I love yep. him. He was my favorite character in the whole movie. And by the way, she doesn't thank him or do anything. He just she just runs off and he's like, Oh, you're welcome. I'll just I'll just, I'll just keep being a black guy in cowboy times. That's good. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. Uh do you want to know my name so I can get an over five? Yeah, no, no, so sure, credit? surely no. don't. Okay. So yeah, so but she rescues the two little girls and runs off. The the black guy stops Duke and, and she hits the henchman with like one of those fireplace poker things right in the fucking face. <laughs> nice. Damn straight she does. And then the crowd lynches Duke. They they hang him. It's just so sloppy. It's such a sloppy plot idea. I was yeah. literally laughing. While she's just like, that guy's a pedophile. And they're like, we instantly believe you. Let us unite as a casino for justice. <laughs> yeah, it is. It doesn't make sense. That's, that's, hence, hence my comment about it. It's a good thing it didn't backfire. <laughs> instantly <laughs> murder that guy. Right. No, exactly. And, well, and that's just the thing. After meandering and doing nothing for two hours and Eight minutes, the movie's like, oh, fuck, we got five minutes. Shit, shit. Right? Because <laughs> yeah. then we time jump to three years later. Uh. So so she's in San Francisco. Paul sees her. He's wandering San Francisco, the shitty brother-in-law. And he sees her going into fucking Our Lady of Act Three Resolutions convent or whatever. Yeah, it's literally called the House of Magdalena. <laughs> so Which, um, stupid. hey, if you're naming a, like, special nunnery for ex-prostitutes, I feel like you don't call it the House of Magdalena. <laughs> or you actually do. I bet you there are places like yeah, that. Yeah, probably. Like Catholic places that are literally called Mary Magdalene's drown your face in this holy water yeah nunnery sure so <laughs> yeah i was confused i was like is she a nun but then they explain no this is where like ex-sex workers go to like learn not to be sex workers. yeah learn a useful trade yeah, you can't tell because you can't quite see the chalkboard but they're planning to take down Pornhub as you oh nice. <laughs> it's a whole thing. Yeah. Yeah. yeah 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 so but paul comes in to find her and 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 they have a conversation where it's revealed that he married Miriam, the 13-year-old the kid that Angel tried to leave Michael to. Mm -hmm. Right? This this terrible rapist of a character that was never, you know, that never got any come up. It's he got a he got a love interest at the end. A child. Thank you. This movie is very sure that I care about this fuckstick, and I super duper do not. Uh, nope. No, like it's not better that you married a child. <laughs> like this nothing about this is redeeming. No. <laughs> No, and well, and then this is where and 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 he explains that Michael still pines for her every day because he's so a weird fuck that thought you could just buy yourself a wife. And then this is where Paul apologizes to her and asks for her forgiveness, and she's like, "Yeah, sure, sure." Yeah, she's like, "I forgave you like years ago." Here's what's so terrible, and again, this is the insit again, not a fun movie, but important to talk about because what she says is, "Well, after I got forgiven, after all I did, how could I not forgive you?" Yeah, after. All the times I was victimized by right. not my fault. Right. Yes. She was sold uh. into sexual slavery when she was 10. Yeah. I was a sex slave and you were a sex slaver. Samesies were good. Right. right, right. Like the reason that they had sex on that drive to town is because he threatened her life if she didn't yes. let him pay for the ride this way. Yeah. Yeah. Right, exactly. And she's like, yeah, but I forgive you for all of that because there's only four minutes left in the movie. Um, he's like, well, come back with me to the farm and, and be with Michael. And she's like, ah, if I committed to that, the movie could end. And it doesn't. It just goes on for eternity because Noah is dead and doesn't realize he's in hell yet. That's what I wrote in my notes. I'm sorry. I tr it turned out not to be correct, but that was my prediction at the time. He's like, well, the carriage leaves at four. 
So that way there can still be some suspense, I guess, as to whether or not you'll show up. Oh, God. Yeah. It's like, just get it over with already. Right. Yes. So, yeah. So we get him coming, getting back to the farm to his wife, pregnant Miriam, who this movie seems to think we're going to remember slash give a shit about. <laughs> yep. <laughs> right. And she's like, did you find Angel? He says, well, I guess we'll have to find out in the next scene, won't we? <laughs> and we, we cut to Michael plowing his fields and his plow breaks or something. And he's like, wow, my life sure does suck. Everything just goes wrong for me. But then he notices at the edge of the field, Angel standing there. And again, this movie can't even do its final scene good because there is a very distracting, let me explain on God's behalf music you going on. <laughs> so they're supposed to be reuniting and someone's like, let me explain where God let you get molested as a child and then <laughs> killed your mom and then sold you into sex slavery three separate times and then burned down your sex slavery place and then burned down your bakery and then let you find another <laughs> So, I can't explain. So the other thing that fucks this movie up is this is supposed to be the rushing into each other's arms moment at the beach or whatever, but it's a plowed field and she's coming sideways across it. <laughs> so she's just gingerly picking her way across that field for like eight years. It takes so long. Right, like Paul could have this. dropped her off closer right. to Michael. <laughs> like, what? He like made her walk across his farm to get there. Oh, Jesus Christ. So yeah, so she finally gets there and she tells as predicted she says my na real name is Sarah and I've never told anyone that I know can they come up with something like did they they just figured we wouldn't notice if they just picked a different bible name yeah right yeah that's what that was right I did postulate in my notes. I was like, okay, how do we make this movie worth it? What would her real name be that would be funny? I had Rand Paul and Fud Rucker. He didn't know about those, Gomer yet. Yeah. I didn't know yeah. about Gomer. Gomer. There was a real what answer waiting for me. Yep. Mm -hmm. Yeah, exactly. But she loves him now and she apologizes to him again. Again. Yeah, it's like again. Yes. Yeah. yeah and, and promises to be obedient property from now on. Oh, and then, of course, what do they close with? Come right. on, it's so predictable. She, her uterus works after all, and she had a baby and... Another on the way. Yeah, just when you think that they're going to end a movie allowing a woman that can't have kids to get through the film and be whole despite that. No, no, yeah. come, give me a fucking break. She's a regular baby factory at this point. Everyone lived happily ever after. Yep. Okay, and again, I don't want to give this movie any credit because it doesn't deserve any... But this child actor with the fishing pole going buck wild, where both of them very clearly break character. <laughs> amazing way to end the movie. Yeah, no, it is. It is the most delightful shot in the movie. Literally closes on this kid being like, hula, hula, I am a ninja. And then being like, Cut. We have to. So he made Michael cry. All right. So that, but that's the end of it. It's all over. He found a wife that had long legs and loved to fish. What is the fucking point? What is the moral of this story? I don't know. Kara, I want you to know I forgive you for watching this movie. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Well, Kara, thank you so much for hanging out with us. We promise to go easier on you next time, assuming that wasn't enough to run you off completely. Oof. Oof. <laughs> I guess we'll find out, right? <laughs> And well, that does it for our review of Redeeming Love. That's not going to do it for the episode just yet because we still need to do something less triggering next week. So, Eli, tell us what's on deck. Well, Noah, after this week, I think we could all use a chuckle. So we'll be watching a Flat Earth documentary. And I am using the term super lightly here, level. Oh, well, like after this week, I'm legitimately looking forward to that. So like with Heck that yeah. to legitimately look forward to, we're going to bring episode 340 to a merciful close. Once again, a huge thanks to Kara for hanging out with us today. Be sure to check the show notes for links to her other projects and a perhaps even huger thanks to all the Patreon donors that help make the show go. If you'd like to count yourself among the ranks, you can make a per episode donation at patreon.com slash godawful and thereby earn early access to an ad-free version of every episode. You can also help a ton by leaving a five-star review and by sharing the show on all your various social media platforms. And if you enjoyed this show, be sure to check out our sibling shows, the scathing the citation needed D&D minus and the skeptic credit available wherever podcasts live. If you have questions, comments, or cinematic suggestions, you can email godawfulmovies at gmail.com. Legal services for this podcast are provided by the offices of P. Andrew Torres. Tim Robinson takes care of our social media. Our theme song was written and performed by Ryan Slot and Google Drafts on Mars. All of the music was written and performed by our audio engineer, Morgan Clark, and was used with permission. Thanks again for giving us a chunk of your life this week. For Heath Enright and Eli Bosnick, I'm no illusions. Promise to work hard to earn another chunk next week. Until then, we'll leave you with a Breakfast Club close. 
Turns out Michael is a really shitty drunk. Oh, God. Don't worry. <laughs> you'll see him in all his abusive glory in Redeeming Love Part 2, Fist of the Redeemer. <laughs> Jesus Christ. <laughs> Paul went on to at least get his nuts stomped flat by a bull or something. Come on. Eli tried to start hang Brett Kavanaugh chants at a bunch of young Republican events, but all he got was kicked out. Didn't work. That's not all you got. You got to visit it. You got to visit. That's true. The preceding podcast was a production of Puzzle and a Thunderstorm, LLC. Copyright 2022. All rights reserved. Here's NFL legend Terry Bradshaw. This is it. Your last chance to win big money from Publishers Clearinghouse. There are just days left to enter to win. $5,000 a week forever on February 28th. Yep, you got to enter PCH.com before it's too late. Win and you get five grand a week for your life. Then after that, someone you choose gets five grand a week for their life. Real people really win. It's your last chance to enter, people. Come on, let's go. Five grand a week forever. Last chance. Enter now at PCH.com. Entries due to 26. No purchase necessary. Void or prohibited. This message is brought to you by Regeneron. If you have diabetes, listen closely because your ears could help your eyes. Excess sugar from diabetes could lead to eye damage and vision loss, even blindness, and you might not even notice it at first. So remember, now is the time to get your eyes checked. Eye care is especially important with diabetes. See a path forward with actions and potential treatment options that may help your eyes and protect against vision loss. Go see an eye care specialist and visit nowic.com to take charge of your eyesight. That is N-O-W-E-Y-E-S-E-E dot com.